Hello everyone and welcome back. I almost said to the community spotlight, but this is sort of like a special community spotlight. We're here on a Friday. We've got some games to show off for you all today. We've got two runs that are going to be here by Infinite Mystery. Starting off with Adventure Kid, followed by Bonk's Adventure 3. And then after that we're going to have Streets of Rage 4 by Shinkenso. So we've got a nice little show for you all today. Some bonus content, as we've been calling it, just an extra Friday show. But for some announcements for stuff coming up, this Sunday we're going to be having an anniversary party for Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, it had its anniversary not that long ago. Sunday was the first day we could get that worked out for everyone. So we're going to be showing off Xenoblade Chronicles 1 speedrun, followed by Future Connected. That's going to be a bunch of fun. And uh, if you haven't seen yet, Summer Games Done Quick 2020 has been pushed to being online and will be happening August 16th through 23rd. Game submissions are open from now until June 17th. You can go to gamesdonequick.com for more info on that. Uh, if you'd like more information about GQ Hotfix and all the stuff that we're doing on the channel between our main events, you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix for more information on that. And of course, we announced at the start of the month that Games Done Quick will be donating all of our sub and bit revenue for the month of June to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's worth checking them out. Very good cause. So we do encourage people, if you have that Twitch Prime, to toss it in there. It's going to a really good charity. But now that we've got all of those announcements out of the way, we've got Infinite Mystery here about to run Venture Kid for us. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, Rayquan. How's everybody doing out there? Hopefully everyone's having a nice morning and evening, wherever you are. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they, I hope they are as well too. There we go, we can talk. And of course we have Belthick joining us. How are you, Belthick? I'm doing great, yourself? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see some speedruns. I, I have very passing knowledge on both of these. And, you know, I am is here to... Uh, Show them to us. So, why don't you explain Venture Kid for us? Like, what is this game? What can we expect to see here? Venture Kid, um, quite similar to a certain Blue Bomber, Mega Man. Uh, kind of a Mega Man 8 bit style um, platformer. Um, various weapons um, are obtained through, you can obtain through a shop and you um don't think i think you can explain this a bit better than i could uh yeah it's basically your mega man clone uh it's going based off of the 8-bit nes versions uh with a little bit of super nintendo uh mixed into it in terms of the graphical features of the cutscenes that you're going to see and just the actual just load of the game. This game actually has a lot to offer, and it's not just your straightforward A stages, final boss, and done. Uh, this game has good and bad endings where you get to have to go and find and hunt treasures. It has extra items in the game to uh, boost your gameplay. There is a shop like Infinite Mystery just mentioned uh, where you can buy various different things to help you along your adventure. Uh, it's just a very interesting game through and throughout. Uh, the upgrades that you do acquire uh, it's very similar to maybe like the later Mega Man games in the series where instead of it powering up just your actual weapon, it actually gives you a whole nother, um, a whole nother thing to do. So like maybe double jumping or if you've played uh, Mega Man 5 Game Boy, when you get the Pluto power up, you can slide. There's a lot of different things that this game can offer uh, and you're going to see it all in full scale with uh, Infinite Mystery running. All right. Is there anything else you think we should know before we get started, or are we ready to get going? Um, the categories that the category that's being run today, um, there's classic, which means you just have to play the stages in a certain order. While adventure, you get to pick the first eight stages in any order that you wish, and then after that comes the difficulty levels which this um, run will be on hard. The main, the main difference between the difficulty levels is your character Andy starts off with less hearts at the beginning and less overall with a option picked up from um, Uncle's shop and bosses take more health. 
Yeah, the the bosses it takes uh, two to two bullets per per hit point and hard. So everything after normal hard and new game plus uh, bosses are basically double the health, so to speak. Um, another thing too with adventure is that Infinite Mystery is playing this on the Switch. Uh, the Switch offers an adventure mode and a classic mode. If you're playing this on the PC through Steam, you only have access to classic mode. So that's why the boards are split up the way they are and the uh, the categories are split up the way they are. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for the information. Uh, are you ready to start? Because I am ready whenever you are. I'm ready. All right. What it... you... Sorry, what was that? Uh, I was just going to say, I would, um, just... Ready for the countdown? Yeah. Why don't you give us a countdown, Belthick? Can do. All right. Let's get started in three, two, one. Let's go, I am. All right. So, like we said, adventure mode uh, allows you to basically do a stage select. Uh, think of Mega Man, where you can kind of pick, you know, which robot master you want to start out with first. Uh, Venture Kid has stages that you can kind of choose first. Uh, here, Infinite Mystery is going to start off with Jungle. The reason we're starting off with Jungle is because at the end of the stage, once Infinite Mystery takes down King Kong, he's going to get an ability called Double Jump. Uh, since this is good ending, you're going to see Infinite Mystery as well collect treasures throughout the stage. Uh, the little purple orbs that you see on the ground, those are your currency. So if you look in the top right corner of the screen, you can kind of see a number getting, getting ticked up there. Uh, that number is very important, especially in late game, uh, where we're going to utilize the shop quite a bit. Uh, so here we get some MOA heads. Everyone knows that MOA heads were invented by Konami uh, during the Gradius game, so no, no real history there. So uh, here we're going to have Infinite Mystery climb up. He's going to get a, get a bomb. Uh, the tough part about this little section is that it's very, very tight corridors with the ground and the cement. So once he grabs this bomb, he's going to drop down into a hole and hopefully just not get hit at all. And he's going to break down some, some dirt patches. Here you're going to hear the music change quite a bit. Uh, it's almost like an eerie, like something bad is about to happen. But in reality, uh, I am about to go find his first treasure. Uh, something about the MOA heads as well, too, that I didn't discuss is they activate once you've walked past them. So once you've walked past them, you can kind of see the eye glow pink, and it's going to shoot a arrow at, at you. Uh, so if the mystery's collected his feathers, and now he's going to work his way back up through, uh, through the stage again, basically where he grabbed the bomb. Um, there's going to be a pretty tight sequence coming up here too with a crashing ceiling that is probably the second best part of the run because it is kind of terrifying to watch. One thing to note when you're when Andy is carrying an item, you can if you press the if you press the attack button, he will use it immediately. But you can't um, fire your regular projectile while you're holding the item. Correct. Yeah. So here I, I am going to collect a two time power up for currency. So the the little uh, purple spheres that uh, I am's been picking up have been one one coin. Now with the double, he's going to get two. Uh, and the the bigger spheres are obviously worth more. So here we got King Kong. So King Kong has a couple different patterns as he progresses through this fight. Uh, to start, King Kong is going to drop boulders from the, from the sky, and then the last boulder that that will fall is the boulder that stays on the ground. Uh, kind of think of like the DuckTales 2 boss, uh, when uh, when the stone golem is stomping its foot and the rocks kind of come down. Very kind of similar to that. Um, as you can see, as the health dwindles on King Kong, uh, King Kong starts to jump around the screen a bit too, so Andy has to walk underneath King Kong or hide in a corner for a bit. So here we uh, skip the cutscene. It's just saying that, hey, you got double jump now. And uh, now we're in uh, the jungle. So, or not the jungle, we're in... Um, forest. Uh, forest, yeah, yeah, trees, same thing. Um, <laughs> so we're in the forest. This is actually stage one. So if you were playing the classic mode or if you were just playing the game kind of casually, this is the stage you're going to start with. This is a stage that basically teaches you, hey, jump over pits, spikes are bad. 
uh, hey, shoot your shoot your gun, you know, to get through the spiders that are blocking your way. Uh, it's just uh, it's your basic kind of tutorial-y type stage, minus the tutorials. The lore of the story is very, pretty much similar to your your classic Mega Man title. There's a there's a scientist named Techlove who's threatening to use a laser to destroy portions of an island that our hero Andy just happens to currently live on, along with his sister and his uncle. But he doesn't shake his eyebrows. What's no. the, the story justification <laughs> for this pea shooter? Are you like shooting a weapon? Are you like throwing stuff? He's actually shooting a, a handcrafted um, blaster made by his uncle. Yeah. So his, his uncle like, is a craftsman. Uh, so Andy is shooting this uh, kind of like a steampunk, basically, pistol uh, at, at the enemies here. So every time that Andy has defeated an enemy, uh, the cutscene actually shows uh, his uncle crafting the, the, the new weapon or say like, hey, I made a new weapon for you from you defeating this boss, you know, use it wisely. So instead of absorbing the power, the uh, the, the materials are, are gathered and crafted. So, uh, of course, we got bees. You always have to have bees in, in a video game, especially in a Mega Man game. Especially so, trying to hit you over a gap, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So here we have the, the lynx or bobcat or whatever you want to call it. Um, this version of the boss is pretty easy. Uh, it's going to jump, land in the middle, and then go left and right. It's going to shoot these orbs that go in a wave pattern. If you just hang out on the edge of the center uh, podium, you'll basically never get hit. In the game itself, while you only, while you know, you may have noticed that I only have so much energy. You, um, health is very limited in terms of drops as it is you also as well as you may also very as well excuse me. also as far health is very limited um, health wise and the drops are limited as well so you can sometimes rely on obtaining help from the shop that your uncle runs or you may just rely on the drops from enemies but you may not see, you won't see a lot of health throughout the game, but or, but when you reach a boss, there will be some kind of health always before you reach a boss. Sometimes three, sometimes two, depending on the boss that you're facing. Yeah, that that's something to know. Kind of throughout the game, there are sporadic health pickups that you can do. Um, but like I am said, health is actually very, very scarce in this playthrough. Uh, you kind of saw a little bit there earlier. I am did uh, the double jump. He basically just skipped a, a nice portion of the stage having double, double jump this early. And here he's going to actually death abuse. Uh, it's quicker just to take the death there and go back to the time stopping uh the uh, power up that we saw on the screen there. So here, Infinite's going to do another kind of a tight jump to grab this bomb. Otherwise, you have to go all the way around to the right and dodge a bunch of, bunch of spikes. But again, like I am said, at the end of the stage, typically right before the boss room, there is two to three hearts that you can pick up to fill yourself up. So here we have the Pharaoh fight. Personally, I think this is the easiest fight in the game. Uh, Pharaoh can have four different attacks. Uh, Pharaoh can walk to the side and shoot. Pharaoh can kind of just jump over the center. Pharaoh can do this disappearing act that you see right now. And uh, Pharaoh can shoot this like big bomb into the center and kind of just explode. Uh, you saw that Infinite Mystery lost all of his health and then the game kind of paused and refilled his health again. He went to the shop to buy a health refill. Uh, kind of like a, an extra life or a continue, so to speak. Um, because when you die in this game, there are checkpoints, but the checkpoints, depending on the stage, are questionable at best. So uh, now we're in the city. So the most, uh, the scariest uh, enemy in this, this stage is the box enemies. So if you remember the Mets from Mega Man, 
we have something very similar here in Venture Kid where the enemies kind of hang out in uh, the box, almost like Solid Snake and Metal Gear. They're just kind of just hanging out. Uh, this is probably the most demanding part of the stage here is the UFOs that have the wave-like pattern and the uh, upward shooting spikes that blow up into four different patterns as well, too. Uh, I am doing a very good job getting through this pattern here, so... Because the, the pattern through this section isn't always consistent. It's, uh, it, it's, I, I, I want to say it's time based on when you enter the screen, but, uh, it's, it's not an easy screen if you get a really bad pattern because sometimes when you're about to jump over one of the spike pits, the UFO is jumping as one of the spikes is shooting up at the same time. So not only do you have to dodge the wave of the UFO, now you have to dodge a four directional shot from one of the, uh, spikes at the bottom. So, here, Infinite Mysteries are going to go on top and kind of go out of bounds. Mario walk across the top of the screen and get our our other treasure here, which is an NES cartridge. Someone lost their Legend of Zelda card. <laughs> <laughs> which one? One or two? <laughs> They're both good. That's true. I'm trying to remember which one of them was released with the gold cartridge. Both of them were actually. Oh, they both were? were. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we have uh, your very typical platformer, but this one's a little tedious because uh, it's one of those, hey, there's a hole here, but something's going to jump out of it. And if you haven't played the game before, you, you don't know that and you get hit and then you fall into the water and die. Um, your 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 famous uh, pitfalls in a, in a platforming game. So here, uh, Infinite's going to take this bomb actually into the boss room and use this bomb against the boss right away to do some initial damage. So this boss is pretty obnoxious. Uh, if you've ever kind of played uh, Kirby's uh, Kirby's Adventure for NES and fought the uh, fought the wheel boss later on. Uh, kind of a similar idea, but this time the hitbox is like the size of a pea, and the only way to kill this boss is to shoot him in the head. So anywhere else, the bullets just kind of bounce off of him. And the pattern, again, is kind of sporadic. Uh, he'll do wheelies at you, which basically gives you no opening at all to hit him. And then from there, too, he'll actually jump around the screen. So we have probably the set my my second favorite stage in the game, which is the volcano. Um, this uh, this stage is actually pretty dangerous. Uh, it's not the hardest stage in my opinion, but it is a pretty dangerous stage because later on we're going to go into moving platforms over lava, and well, lava is typically bad in a, in a video game and uh, we don't want to fall into it. Also, these jellies break into three different things. And of course, you know, wherever there's lava, you have to have fireballs that come out of it. Uh, we can all thank Mario for, for that. <laughs> yeah, it's just a rule of game design. You gotta have the potaboos. <laughs> right, exactly. If you have lava, you gotta have fireballs. So again, here we got some more similar to the Mets, but now they're they're rocks instead of boxes. They've oh. they've they've upgraded. Hmm. That jumps hard. Like it's like it's like one tile. It's like a one and a half ish tile like space to jump through. So like as you can see, like when when I am is landing on those like one block like platforms right there, a little bit of Andy is still hanging off of them. Like that jump is really hard to do because of the like rounded incline that that little corner has. Uh, it definitely, uh, it's it's rare that I get that first try, <laughs> just because of that little roundedness on there. I'll probably just buy one extra life just for safety. Since on hard mode you can't find any, unlike the lower difficulties. Yep. Oh really? You have to buy them in hard mode? Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. And it but wouldn't, wouldn't be a cave without a bat either. But they also cost at least 150 which if I can avoid, I would like to not have to waste as much currency as possible. 
So you're saying you're not gonna go for the lava jump now? <laughs> 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 so the lava jump, that last platform that I am was standing on, uh, when I was routing the game a few years back, I found that if you had double jump early, you could double jump over the rest of that lava. However, your inputs have a high likelihood of getting eaten. And when you bonk the ceiling, you lose your double jump as well too. Uh, so the <laughs> risk reward for that jump kind of isn't worth it, but uh, it's kind of cool to see sometimes. So that's why that, that jump earlier is so difficult because you bonk your head, you lose your second jump. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes a little bit more sense. I was not yeah. understanding why the ceiling was so, causing trouble. So with that jump, when you jump, you have to go as long as you possibly can. And then at, basically at the last minute, do your double jump right before you touch the lava, otherwise you, you will fall in the lava, regardless. It's so, so mean. Yeah, it's it's something. So here, Infinite Mysteries going against, I would say arguably the, the more tedious boss of the run, uh, the Phoenix. So Infinite Mystery is using the ice power up here to go against the Phoenix. The Phoenix, once it gets to a later later uh, health pool, is going to start diving into the lava and start raining fire down. But we're not going to see that because Infinite Mystery is a professional and uh, destroyed the Phoenix without issue. Honestly, I'm glad it didn't decide to dive. Yeah. So now we got the, the ice cave. Uh, ice cave is littered with bats and welders. Um, yeah, welders, not, you know, it's just what you, what you do sometimes. You gotta weld in a cave. Um, so a lot of little things too you're seeing, like these little, like, um, I guess like, they almost look like pills. Those are, so if you look at the top left-ish corner of the screen where you see PWR, which is your power, every time Infinite Mystery uses a unique weapon, just like a Mega Man, it utilizes some sort of power. Uh, those little pill drops that are dropping help refill that power up, so. So double jumps count as using your power? Like you have yes. a limited supply yeah. of double jump? Okay. That's an interesting way of doing that. Yeah, the only time that power is never a factor in this game is if you play New Game Plus. So, but if you play New Game Plus, like you're you're missing out on a lot of lot of the game, honestly. So here I am had the uh, the uh, the frozen power up, which what that does is that when I am throws the hourglass, it's going to freeze everything in place, and he has a limited amount of time to get through wherever he's at. So here, Infinite Mystery is going to go for the next treasure in the Ice Cavern. Um, in this, the mining carts are questionable sometimes when it comes to jumping out of them. Um, if you don't get out of the mining cart in time, you're either just going to fall to your death, or if you don't get out of the mining cart at all and it hits the spikes, you're just dead. Uh, every once in a while, your, your input will get eaten in those mining carts. I think the minecarts here are a bit better than than how they operate in DuckTales. Yeah, that's no no question. Not even gonna argue that one. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the minecart, the way it's moving up and down and wiggling as it goes, is actually reminding me of Tasmania. <laughs> oh yeah. So in these blocks, there's these little like landmine bombs. Something fun about them as well too is that you can actually use them to destroy ice blocks as well. Uh, it's quicker just to break the ice blocks and go through them, you know, as fast as possible. This is a speed run, but you can use the little bombs to blow up ice blocks, as Infinite Mystery just showed you. As much as I didn't want to waste the wine currency, might as well do it for safety. Yeah, I saw that you went and picked up some some extra coin, so try and make up for that. So here we're into the uh, the push for the the boss here. If it Mitchie's going to use napalm, 
Uh, what's going to happen is that these two miners are on this on this cart, and they're going to go back and forth. Infinite Mystery is going to throw this napalm power up and take down the uh, the miner that's closest to him. And then once that closest miner is done, uh, the other miner's going to keep jumping and throwing pickaxes at him. But instead of throwing one pickaxe, he's going to throw two or three pickaxes at him. Uh, so Infinite Mystery is going to have to carefully time his jumps and precisely uh, place his jumps because the spikes hanging out in the sky there too. If they are touched, he will die in one hit. So, and the position of the spikes differ depending on the on the miners. When both of the miners are present, then they're up high. When the when the low miner is left, then then they are much lower. Makes it a little bit tougher too, because you have to try and precisely time your jump, but also precisely not get hit by a pickaxe. Because you only have three health, so this stage, the factory, oh, this is, in my opinion, the worst stage of it all. Uh, this is the hardest stage, the most tedious stage, the longest stage. Uh, it's it's a stage. Let's just put it that way. Um, so Infinite Mystery is going to be jumping back and forth between the Ice Power-Up and the Boots Power-Up. So what the Ice Power-Up is going to be doing is that he's going to be freezing enemies in place just to jump over them. Um, and he's going to be using the Boots Power-Up to walk over those spikes in case he happens to fall off the cogwheel. Um, he's going to carry this bomb into a brokenish type cracked wall as you see there on the right hand side and uh, hit a switch on the end. What this is going to do is that it's going to open a door later on in the stage to activate uh, our second to last treasure to collect. The good thing about using the spike boots are they don't dream as long as you're on the spikes. They'll only dream one one health apiece when, you're at, when you actually hit something. Or if something hits you. They won't yep. continuously dream like other like other weapons. Something weird about napalm as well too is that you saw right there that Infinite Mystery just threw napalm and it hit the ceiling, but it also crawled on the floor. Uh, at least in New Game Plus, we use that glitch heavily in Factory to uh, to, to kill a lot of the enemies in front of us where we purposely will aim for the ceiling to take out rows of enemies. Uh, it's a it's a nice little glitch to have. Don't know if it was intended, but it's nice to have. Mm -hmm. So here we have the slot machines. The absolute worst enemy in the game. Uh, they have four different attacks, and if you let them go, you hope for the X attack, which means that their attack is canceled and they can't do anything. In a speed run, we're going to freeze them and run away from them as fast as possible. <laughs> You'll notice also in the factory, there seems to be a, there's a couple of different paths. You, you know, a lot of times you don't want to go left because you will find yourself some in a different part of the factory you don't want to be in and it will also circle you right back towards the beginning. Yeah, uh, earlier in the stage you saw uh, Infinite Mystery go up instead of down. Uh, if Infinite Mystery would have actually went down instead of uh, instead of up, he would have actually completely skipped the whole treasure part of the stage and uh, would have never known there was a treasure there. So uh, Here we're going in into the most annoying boss fight in the run, which is the bulldozer. Uh, again, just like the motorcycle, the only way to do damage to this boss is to hit them in the face with your bullets. Uh, there's no power-up that makes this any faster. It's just a rhythmic jump and shoot and take him down the old-fashioned way. He has three different uh, methods of attacking. He will launch these basically walking lighters after you. 
Uh, he'll lay down some landmines that you saw in the ice cavern, or he'll throw some bombs up that end up going into the deeper parts. They kind of go to where your last position was, so. So here we're into the castle. This is personally my favorite stage, because you're going to see a lot of, uh... You're going to see a lot of resemblance to Shovel Knight in this stage, and Shovel Knight is one of my modern-ish, favorite modern-ish platformers. Um, so, yeah, it's so good. So as we get through here, you get a little bit of a Castlevania vibe, but as we move through the rest of the stage, we're going to get a little bit of a Shovel Knight vibe here soon, so... Um, you mean I have with... a Sword Knight decides to just let, let us pass under him? Yeah, that was nice of him. Also, Sword Knight has no relation to Shovel Knight. But even the even the boss of this stage has a uh, has a very much a common feel to that of Spectra Knight, which you know has that uh, floating in the sky stuff going on. So the most uh, terrifying part of this stage is the breakaway blocks. Um, Every once in a while, you can get a little bit of a troll going on with these blocks, and uh, you'll... I've had it where I've clipped into the corner of them and been stuck and just fell to my death. Uh, even with the spikes, too, if you touch the side of them, at least, again, in the PC version, because that's the version that I run, in the PC version, if you touch the side of the spikes, you will actually die as well. So here we got the uh, the swinging swinging spike balls. Um, we're gonna see three different versions of them. Uh, each floor that we go up, they get faster. So the first one's really slow, the second one's moderately fast, and the third one's faster. Uh, when we when we first started playing the game and routing the game, we never knew that the chain didn't damage you. Uh, we just assumed that the chain did, and then uh, uh, one day Infinite Mystery is like, you can just jump through the chain. And I was like, oh. So, uh, there, so. there's that for us. <laughs> Otherwise, we waited for the ball to swing past. So here we have uh, we have death. Uh, of course, you fight death with bottle rockets. Uh, just remember that. So, very similar to Spectre Knight, honestly, where he has a scythe, he throws it around, swings it around, summons enemies, um, instead of enemies to send me a little fireballs. But, uh... It's a, it's actually a pretty interesting fight too. It's it, it's hard because you have to kind of hit him in the bottom, bottom tail of the uh, of the cape. Uh, otherwise, your bullets kind of bounce off. So I get a, a pretty small hitbox. But the actual fight itself actually offers a lot of variety to it versus some of the previous fights. It's unfortunate the one cut scene in the game you can't skip. Fighting death with bottle rockets makes me think of Earthbound. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the evil doctor. So we just... Our, our uncle just happened to build us a, a space rocket. Um, so we're going into space. Oh, you get a one-up. Wow. I didn't realize you got a one-up in this cutscene. Um, so we're going to take a rocket up to the the UFO or the spaceship here. And this is the final world of the game. We have uh, basically three stages in this, this world here. Uh, so we're going to silver surfer our way through uh, the first segment here. Using the slowest item to, <laughs> I to like slide that one. Uncle could possibly have thought of. <laughs> it's yeah. like the tank in Contra 3. <laughs> you said you're going to Silver Surfer your way through it, and I got worried because that game's hard. Yeah. Infinite Mystery can beat it blindfolded. No. <laughs> <laughs> so here, uh, there's a lot of a lot of orbs uh, in this this part of the part of the game. Uh, remember, the orbs are currency. Um, we're, Infinite Mystery is going to need a decent amount of money come uh, later on in uh, in this world. So, did 
this area is where double jump helps a lot. But you also don't want you also want to watch where you jump to. And hope you don't bump into any sort of spikes. The the aliens are they're they're easy but they're annoying. You know if you if you remember playing Mario Lost Lost Levels, they have like those squids with the little babies attached to the back of them. Yeah. That's what the aliens are. Obnoxious. The blue. So here we have two choices. We have one and two. Um, <laughs> very descriptive. Uh, we're going to choose two because it actually puts us later in the stage. So if you remember, uh, is it Quick Man and Mega Man Two, where the la where the laser beams are that you have to dodge? Uh, kind of a similar idea to this. Uh, you have to go very quickly, otherwise the laser beams are going to kill you in one hit. The laser beams will activate once you pass one of the sensors in the walls. And uh, you're going to see here coming up that infinite mystery is going to fall down a hole. And it's going to be very much later on and basically the end. I've never seen that Terminator be right there before. And pretty much be at the end of the stage. Um, if he would have chose one, he basically would be at the beginning segment of that bottom part he just fell down into and would have to go through a whole series of hidden spikes and and death blocks uh, so yeah the bobcat's back in robot form so uh doesn't do the only the only different attack that this mob power this boss has now is that it shoots a bomb into the center and um shoots projectiles out in a fanning pattern after that the Metal Lynx is actually weak to the, the flame weapon, but it's kind of awkward to be able to hit it. So it's yeah. just easier to deal with with your trusty buster weapon. Yep. And uh, you see Infinite Mystery using that shield as well, too. When that shield is hit, it actually reflects the projectile back, to, uh, back the way it came. So uh, you're going to see Infinite Mystery use shield quite a bit, probably, for the rest, uh, rest of the stage that and double jump obviously so you're kind of you're, you all are kind of starting to see why currency is just plays such a big role in this uh we want a lot of currency uh we take a lot of damage boosting through through these stages so to basically counter a lot of the the stuff that's going on if we die we have to go back to checkpoints which is a waste of time so we buy these energy refills to let us keep going so we purposely can take damage in certain areas and let us keep keep rocking uh here infinite mystery has the hourglass again to uh freeze the pattern in which you're seeing with those death blocks right now Also, those orbs that are floating around, if they touch you, you die. So right there, there's hidden block, there's hidden death blocks on one on each one of those podiums, and there's hidden death blocks underneath that thing where uh, uh, I am just ran through. The smaller orbs you see are the safe spots. Anywhere else, spikes. Yep. You can also freeze those orbs too. If you use your freeze power up, you can actually freeze those orbs. I I, I did that to to start when I was learning the game. So here we're gonna get uh, potions. Those potions are your E tanks. So when you run out of power, uh, you drink a potion and get your power back. Uh, I don't. You don't use a potion in your run at all, do you? I am. Mm, if I can't access a shop, I may have to, depending on what item is needed. Now we deal with Dr. Wily, or, I mean, sorry, Tech Love's fabulous machine. No, this is Gamma. So, Tech Love Phase 1 here uh, puts himself into a mech suit and does three attacks I guess you can say he'll shoot his fist at you which bounces around uh, he'll turn around and shoot some some orbs at you in a fanning motion I know you guys like the word orb in chat so 
Uh, otherwise, he'll just walk towards you and jump over the center. It's actually a very predictable pattern. His phase two is what's uh, probably the more dangerous part of this fight. Yes. Again, his hitbox is just ahead, so... My hope is that tech glove does nothing in terms of a slide. Or just de or decides to do a shuriken or anything else away from Andy. Yeah, so remember in hard mode that bosses have basically double the health. So Iam's already used one of his health refills. Uh, right there, Teklov basically rips off his doctor's jacket and it's like, all right, it's go time. So he'll uh, try to uppercut you, he'll slide kick you. As you saw with the shield out, he'll throw some orbs out there and the shield pushes them back into him. Uh, he'll jump kick you. It's it's all over the place. The pattern is extremely unpredictable. Uh, you just have to go with the flow. So here um, we, we quote unquote beat the game. This is where bad ending is done. Uh, if you don't collect any of the treasures, the first beam comes down, Andy doesn't progress, and the, the game is over. Uh, this is good ending. Uh, so all the treasures that Infinite Mystery just collected basically was to block off the doors so they couldn't close all the way. So now he's going into basically uh, Bashi. Um, so we're going to be on the Silver Surfer surfboard again, and here we're going to have a ton of spikes, a ton of one-tile blocks, uh, and then basically if you remember Solgren from uh, Bashi, uh, we're going to have a very similar fight like that. Unfortunately, with this stage, there are no checkpoints, so if you die anywhere, you have to repeat. That is correct. Yeah, there are no checkpoints in this part of the game now. So if Infinite Mystery gets to the final part of this boss fight and dies, which would be very unfortunate, uh, he would have to do the entire stage over again in all uh, two phases beforehand, too, again. So you're going to see Infinite Mystery use his shield for the boss fight as well, too. The only way that the boss can be damaged is to shoot the glass dome of the plane. And we're keeping the shield out because if we uh, get a good chance whenever Andy is jumping, Andy's going to reflect the bullet back. And if we get lucky, it's going to hit back into the glass uh, the glass dome. So. Yeah, I was very surprised when you told me that you were running good ending. I was like, wow, all right. <laughs> Even though Andy is using the shield, it doesn't have the best hitbox. No. You kind of have to hit it right in the center. And also the shield does utilize power as well too. So if you run out of power with the shield, you do have to drink, an, you do have to drink a potion or take an E-Tank. Uh, if there are no E-Tanks available or potions available, uh, you're going to have to be very good at dodging bullets, especially here in the later parts of this fight. So here, uh, Infinite Mystery is jumping try and stay away from the spikes, kind of get to that auto-scroller. Uh, now Teklov is going to start doing tri-shots with his uh, with his plane instead. And uh, again, here is uh, shoot the dome, and uh, basically here is where double jump is good instead of the shield, uh, because the, the bullets can go to kind of a weird height sometimes, depending on how they want to break. Uh, so having that extra jump available to get over the... Uh, the item is, is nice. Oh yeah, there is one last thing to mention about the shop. You can access the shop at any time while you're in the stage, but once you reach once you reach a boss, you can no longer access it. That's right, it's locked. I forgot about that. So here we go. We're going into the final segment of this stage. That was it's terrifying. <laughs> So here uh, is a lot of spike jumping. Uh, remember, if Infinite Mystery touches any of these spikes, uh, it is uh, back to the beginning of the stage. So uh, we are in the final part of this fight. I'm going to be quiet and let Infinite Mystery concentrate on this part since there is burst firing, try shots, and everything else. Probably a good time to use those potions. And time will be coming up soon. 
Oh, that was a nice, nice hit on that burst shot. Very nice run. Is that time? Yes, that's time. Okay. How bad was it? That was good. You're underestimate. You were like low 3850s because I didn't hit time because I wasn't sure what it was. Mm, I guess it could have been worse. It's underestimate. It's perfect. It seemed pretty solid. You just took a lot of safety, you know? Just for the sake of uh, a showcase. Yep. Oh, and that is Venture Kid, which you can find on your Nintendo Switch and on Steam. I'd like yeah. to thank you, Belphic, for, for helping me with commentary. Thank you, GQ Hotfix, for letting me um, try out and um, play the game. So if somebody saw this game and they wanted to get into it, I saw a few people looking interested in chat. Where would they go to learn the speedrun? We do have a Discord for this game. Uh, we've had a few new runners come in in the last few months. Um, we have a Discord. You can reach out to Infinite Mystery or I for a for a link. Uh, we don't really have much for tutorials, so to speak, like nothing written up and no no videos that I that I know of in a way. Maybe Infinite Mystery has some videos, uh, but I we do put one together very easily. Yeah, but we do have like a channel that's dedicated to just helping runners. Uh, theory craft, maybe understand how a glitch or a trick is, is done and things like that too. So the community is small. Uh, the most active people I think right now is Infinite Mystery and I, but it is, uh, it is a good time. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for showing this off. And uh, somebody in chat mentioned earlier that this game is one of the ones that's on sale on the eShop if you're looking at it because there's big sales going on on the Switch. Oh, yeah, go buy it. We need more runners. So, yes. thanks Infinite Mystery and Belthick. We'll stick around, we've got more games coming up. Infinite is going to be here showing us Bonk's Adventure 3 coming up next. So we'll be back in just a few minutes with that, so stay tuned. Alright everyone, welcome back to our special showcase today. Got some bonus runs for you all filling up the Friday with some speedruns that we normally would not have had. Okay, sorry, the game was loud there. So if you couldn't hear me, we are back. And we're gonna be doing Bonk 3, Bonk's Big Adventure, with Infinite Mystery here running again for us. And now we have swapped commentators. We have Great John here to help us out today. Why don't you say hello? Hello, uh, I'm Great John. Uh, I run mainly the Bonk games, but other TurboGrafx-16 games as well. Um, I, I do play this one a lot lately, so. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So if somebody's never seen Bonk's Adventure before, what, what are we in for for this one? Because it's... This is a very odd game. So Bonk's Adventure, it was, it was a pretty kind of straightforward early platformer. Uh, this one gets a little crazy. There's a lot of uh, changing size mechanics and some very weird enemies. But it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's just a very quirky game. All right. Is there anything you feel like we should know before we get started? Uh, I just uh, I'd like to point out this is this is a these are really fun games. Like a lot of people are probably pretty familiar with Bonk's Adventure or maybe even Bonk's Revenge. Those are kind of the the most popular ones. I think Bonk Three is uh, a little underrated. It's it's one I hadn't really played too much until I started picking it up for speedrunning, and it's really fun. It's definitely a fun speedrun as well. All right then. Sorry, what was that? Losing you a little bit on your microphone there, Infinite. Oh, mm, I, mm, okay. no, I didn't say Okay, <laughs> never mind, we're good. <laughs> Thought you were trying to talk. But if you are good to go, I'm ready when you are. Okay, I just um, take, um, take the start on a countdown. Yeah, why don't you give us a countdown, Great John? All right. You ready there, I am? Yes. All right. Three, two, one. Let's go.
All right. All right, so this is uh, Bonk 3, Bonk's Big Adventure. This is uh, the third of the, the Bonk trilogy for the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, this game has a lot of fun mechanics to it. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Bonk game, you are a very adorable caveman. You look like a little kid. Uh, but when you get meat, then you get a little crazy. You get like a little faster, and you also get some uh, gained bonking abilities with your head, because your head is the main weapon in this game. So. That's what you're going to be using mainly, collecting these meat power-ups and getting powerful, bonking enemies on the head. So if you get a single meat, you're going to get a little bit of speed and a little bit of boost where you can hit enemies and freeze them in place. Uh, but when it comes to like when you get a double meat, you gain some invincibility, you can breathe fire, you can just like walk right through enemies. So it's uh, pretty crazy. And there's some other mechanics in this game we'll get to when, once he starts picking up some items that are relevant to that. But you can uh, change your size to get small and big in this one. So that's pretty excellent. These faces so, that Bonk is making are fantastic. Oh yeah, I love all the different sprite work where he's got some, uh, some, some really focused faces, some really mean faces. He's very surprised when he picks up the meat. Uh, so you see him pick up this this little flower power up. Uh, I like to call that like noob mode because you can basically just fly through the air uh, and avoid enemies really well. Uh, it, it, it's definitely one of the best power ups where it, like it seems like you might be like wasting a lot of time, but there's definitely parts in the run where you're gonna want to do that because you can just fly over the top of enemies. And I think I am was taking a little bit of safety there so he could get some extra lives because the end of this run gets really hard. So I don't blame him for wanting to get a few extra lives along the way. Oh, you didn't show off getting crushed like a crab. We'll probably see that later. If you get crushed by any of those big blocks right there, uh, you'll turn into a crab and you'll, you'll do some sideways walking. It's actually really useful for swimming underwater, but it doesn't have much use otherwise. Juggling it's that wanted... enemy there just for fun at the end of the level? Yeah. It's actually one of the quicker ways to get through that part because those enemies can be really dangerous. Um, in Bonk's Adventure, they can they can take away a full heart of damage. I think they do in this one as well. Um, so it's definitely something you want to avoid. So if you can kind of bonk them out of your way, that definitely helps. I think this is going to be the first level where we'll start seeing the candies that will change your size for small and big. So that's going to be something we're actually going to use to have a quick little skip in this level. There's there's not a ton of skips in this game, so that's one of the ones you'll see to, to make it through the level just a little quicker. Otherwise, you'd have to go all the way around. Yeah, so you see I'm getting small here and getting right through that hole in the wall. It's, it's something you can't even really see unless you kind of like search around once you're small. I think he's going to get yeah a little bit of safety health here for this boss fight, because this boss fight can be really easy, and it can also be a little scary. So I think I, I'd, I'd actually looked up in the manual what the name for this boss is, and it's the Ugly Crab. So very, <laughs> very descriptive name. But that was a that was a terrific fight by I am. That's, uh, that's the best you can do it, is you just want to kind of be right on top of it and just keep bonking down on it. If, if you happen to get trapped under it, you're going to get smashed into a crab, and you're going to try to be, like, jumping out from under it, and it just it's a bad time. You'll take a lot of damage that way. It's also to note that if you're a um, crab bonk, when you're, your hits aren't as effective as a, as a natural bonk from your head. Yeah, so you, you can kind of bonk them from underneath, but you can't jump nearly as high. Yeah, this, I believe this is the first game that introduces these pipes, too, where you can kind of get squished down into it. I, I think as they were developing these bonk games, they are like, what other things can we do to bonk? We've turned him into a crab, we've made him huge with meat power up, we can change his size. Let's squish him down into a pipe and just squeeze him through that. That's There's actually a part coming up here. I, I am, I don't think you go for it, but... Uh, there's there's a there's a skip here where you can kind of go around or skip going around the edge of the level here. It's a very tricky skip though. I've seen that, but I have no clue how it's done. <laughs> 
Yeah, it looks like you had you were really close to the setup, honestly. If you can bonk off the top of that guy, you can you can get up above that ledge. It, it maybe <laughs> saves about ten seconds, uh, but it, it is it is something that is very tricky to pull off. I think I am very inconsistent on the setup as well. For some reason, that particular enemy is despawned. Oh, yeah. I don't even know how to do that. That's great. I've only seen that happen maybe twice. That never happens. <laughs> Did Bonk just get caught by a fisherman on purpose to get out of the water? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the uh, mechanics. I think that was in... That might have been in all three Bonk games, I want to say. Not sure if it was in one or not, but I, I know it's definitely in Bonk's Revenge. It's a lot of fun. I may actually be a little behind the stream right now, if you were saying you got caught by a fisherman. Uh, are you watching in Discord or are you watching on Twitch? I'm watching on Twitch. Uh, there's a Discord feed you can watch on. Click on my name oh, on Discord. Nice. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't actually. I haven't. I can't find where that is. If you could point me the right direction. Yeah, I'll message you one second. Awesome. Yeah. So the the other. Yeah, we just saw the the, the shrinking down mechanic again, so we could get over by the flower. But it looks like. Okay, I'm going to join the stream, so I'm a little bit more up to date here. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, the, he was trying to go for that that flower power up where he could uh, go up over the edge and just kind of fly up and make this part super easy, but it is also very easy to lose those power ups. So uh, once you get hit once, you're going to you're gonna lose that power up. How bad is but, it losing that power up in like a spot you don't want to? It's uh, it's pretty bad at the end. There's there's one part in the very last level that's like one where you really want to try to keep it as long as you possibly can. It's not a huge time save otherwise. Like what what I am did there was uh, basically exactly what I would do if I'd fall is is that you want to just get back up as soon as you possibly can. And there's there's an easy way to get up. That one's not losing a whole lot of time. Oh yeah, and I haven't explained the teeth mechanic here, where you can use your teeth to climb walls. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those where if you're using the turbo button, which is almost a necessity because you really have to mash it fast in order to get up that wall quickly. I also noticed he uses it to grab hooks and ropes and <laughs> all sorts of other things. Yeah, they, they really went crazy with like all the things they could have Bonk do in this game. It was it was incredible. I'm really impressed by all the custom animations, like swimming up the water, and all the oh, different yeah. grab animations. Yeah, the Bonk games have really excellent sprite work, especially the, the bosses are always so huge and like colorful. That's another enemy to spawn. That's never happened. Yeah, I get that dinosaur to despawn every once in a while. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty cool when it does. So there there is a quick kill for this boss. It is also very tricky to do. Uh, the way Infinite Mystery does it is is also very safe and like a good way to get a lot of hits in. So the only thing that makes this a little quicker kill is that you can you can get him all the way down before he even goes down again. Like so, when, once you're at the very top is basically you, you've got all your hits in. But that was an excellent fight. I mean, what can really go bad in that fight is you can fall down and then you have to like swing your way back up on those platforms to the right. It's super slow, so didn't lose much time there at all. You might also see on those in, in between levels, there's a little menu and it's a, a, like a big list of what looks like activities or something, but it all it is is just bonus levels that you don't want to go to because it would just be a huge waste of time. So thankfully, they just let you skip them entirely. For those who might be wondering about the music, this is the CD, the CD version playing as opposed to the Hue card. Yeah, I wanted to call that out because I uh, I was watching your one of your runs that you had just done, 
and I have never heard the CD music. So like the music and sound effects are incredible in the CD version. Uh, on the Hue card, they're a lot more muted, a little like a little simpler. So it's a lot more fun on the CD version. But unfortunately, I'm not hearing the game audio, so I'm missing out on that. <laughs> um. Yeah, some of the uh, some of the later tracks are pretty rocking for sure. Like the, the boss music is great. All right, and a mechanic I also haven't explained too much is you, you'll see him Infinite Mystery spinning a lot as he's doing this. Uh, it's not nearly as fast as it was in Bonk's Adventure, but it is still one of the fastest movement speeds. It just feels a little slow in this one, uh, but once you you get a little bit of a speed boost or you get like a meat power up, you can really get going and like get across the level a lot quicker. The ground is lava, as as memory our our favorite Bonk Tasser is. Uh, <laughs> is known to say, is you, you want to try to stay off the ground as much as possible. Walking is slow. So something I call out when, I, when I've when i run this game is that this level gives me a lot of Sonic 3 vibes around the, uh, the Egyptian level. It's like, it's got this day-night theme, and it's also, you're like, going deeper into the pyramid as part of the run. And this is actually one of the times where you actually have to be small bonk to, to make it through this area. So you saw him go back and get that, that small bonk candy. But thankfully, they've got a bunch of them around for you. So the smileys are the currency in this game, but those are basically useless to us <laughs> because all they're really going to get you is currency to buy uh, the bonus stages at the end. And there's some enemies that will take away your smileys and you'll be like, no, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, you didn't get to take a nice break on the rock, Infinite Mystery. <laughs> Believe me, I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> it's you get you can get maybe a, a few like five seconds to just kind of relax for a little bit, but <laughs> if you don't get quite on top of it, then you got to fight your way back. We got there eventually. Just you know, that's not right. Start. Yep. No, he did great. So those little uh, those little jumping T Rex enemies are some of my least favorite in this entire game. There we go. We got the crab bonk. <laughs> now you can see it. So again, not very useful. Can't jump very high. So he's basically going to get away from that form as soon as he can. I do like that you can like stick your pincers up and hit enemies above you while you're the crab, though. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure there's people who love the crab. Yeah, this part can be very tricky. A lot of vertical platforming. And these uh, these platforms that open up under your feet are never too kind to you. They're the Yoku blocks of Bong. Uh, you'll also notice there's a whole bunch of uh, Bong extra lives up there. Those are extra lives if you could get those. We have no idea how to get those. <laughs> there's, there's, there's probably some way where you can... Like, if you're a mini bonk, maybe you can kind of bonk off the walls to get up there, but just don't know. This is one of my favorite bosses. It's actually super easy. Once you're up here, you just basically need to stay up and keep bonking. Uh, but it gets bigger as you bonk it. It's like the bomb enemies from Final Fantasy, where it just keeps getting bigger until it eventually is just taking up the whole screen there. But as you can see, it's super simple. It's a lot better of a boss to deal with than the stone boss at times. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a boss rush at the end, and this is like the last one I always do because it's just so easy, and you're just like, all right, I'll do all the hard ones first. All right, so this is this is one of my favorite stages. It's the ice world. See, every good platforming game needs an ice world. It just happens this ice world starts in a volcano. That's a little weird. 
<laughs> totally. So once you once you get this big meat power up, you can kind of just walk across the lava and just kind of power through this whole section. So there's actually a couple big meat power ups here. So this this level could be pretty easy. Yeah, it looks like he's got pretty well lined up to just walk through over to this other side. And there's an extra life in that little alcove just teasing you, but it's, it's kind of not worth the effort to, to go chase because you have to do some tricky platforming. And we want to beat it fast, too. I think I know exactly what Infinite Mystery is feeling when he sees those hearts jumping out into the lava. It's like, oh, I should go get those, right? But like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you tend to then like waste health just trying to get that heart, and you're like, yeah. why did I do that? Always. <laughs> so still a little grassy for an ice level, but I, I swear this is an ice level. This is definitely an ice level. This might even be some kind of a mountain or something. So maybe we'll see ice. Yeah, there's that there's that enemy I was talking about where when they run into you, you lose your smileys, and you're like, oh no, not my smileys. I need those. Hey, look at this. We got some snow. This this is turning into a nice level. It looks it looks more like a nice level now. <laughs> you got some good maneuvering going on here. This this is one of the most frustrating levels in the game just because those snowballs that are coming down from the top are always knocking you back down off these platforms. So, so thankfully, you've been able to avoid most of them. That's great. And you're also doing really good about taking out those T-Rex enemies because they, they will eat your face off. And they're very scary. Everything is off for a meal. <laughs> I swear, in, I swear their hitbox is like a whole bonk's length out in front of you or something because they're always like biting me. Alright, so now we're definitely officially in an ice level, but it also happens to be a water level. So it's just the best of both worlds when it comes to a platforming game. What everybody loves to see. Yeah, so you've got some slippery ice. You've also got some really tricky like vertical platforming. You've got some spikes. It's It's like a Mega Man level, really. It's just really trying to get you. And as I mentioned before, once you get this flower power up where you can fly around, you're just like, okay, now I can just cruise over this level. Take it easy. Collect some hearts if I need to. All right, and we're going to be making our way to the boss of this one too. Oh, those, those droplets that are falling from the ceiling will actually hurt you. Um, so it, it's often a good good tactic to kind of use it if you like need to lose a power-up or something. But looks like Infinite Mystery likes, likes to take this flower power-up as long as he can. Oh, those those dang piranhas. Oh, actually, here, these these uh, these fish enemies that we have with the, the big smoochy lips. I can just <laughs> call them smoochy fish. Uh, they are probably the worst enemy in the game because if they swallow you, then you have to play a platforming level to get out. You have to kind of like snake your way through their body before you can actually escape. So huge time loss if you get swallowed by one of those. And I definitely didn't want to jinx you before you saw them. So no, no, no. the worst part about them is some some of them inside when you're inside of them, some of them are completely different than others. Yeah, it's like a puzzle to get out. So this is one of my favorite bosses because you think it's a princess that's in distress, but nope, it's actually some really ugly squid, like Nautilus thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's really cool because like the ropes are actually, it's one of its tentacles here. And it's, it's all very silly. And I bet you're all wondering, like, what is the story behind this game? Well, you'll eventually get some story at the very end, but that's about it. <laughs> it's like once you're heading into the boss rush, you'll finally understand what the story of the game is. But basically, King Drool is evil. Um, he's always stealing the moon, so that's or at least half of the moon. So the theme of the Bonk games is you're often getting the moon back. Yeah, so far, my take on this game is Bonk is very angry. And <laughs> is just smacking stuff with his head. That's right. 
But most of the time he's really happy, but then he gets really angry when somebody feeds him meat. <laughs> I think it was somebody in my chat said, it's like, he must be a vegan, that's why he's always so upset whenever he eats meat. But really it's probably just that he's he's a caveman and he's got that those impulses. But really he's just happy go lucky most of the time. And Bomb 3 is now on sale. Go to your local game store. <laughs> yeah, I love that. You love Bonk 3. It's the best. And unfortunately, this didn't make it on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, so uh, you can't say, hey, go buy it, and then you can play this game. You can only play 1 and 2 on the, the TG-16 Mini. But still a really good value. There's a ton of great games on that. And I think, uh, so, Infinite Mystery, you have the CD version, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm curious if that was, like, more expensive than the Hue card. I know the Hue card is actually pretty expensive for collecting. Uh, probably harder to find than anything, but yeah. Yeah. Generally, harder to find equals to, e equals <laughs> Very more expensive funny. lately. Yeah, so you're playing this this level is going really great because if you can get this meat power up and you can kind of just power up through these platforms, there's a lot of parts where the bridges are dropping out from under you. It gets really tricky and then you have to like navigate the lava on the bottom. It's a bad time, but in Infinite Mystery just powered through that part. And you're doing really good on lives too and and you picked up that extra health like that little extra shadow of a heart so you can get more health throughout the run too. And I think you end up getting six hearts by the end. If I'm lucky, yes. Yes, if you're lucky. <laughs> I forget where the, uh, I think I only ever get one of them because it's just like right on the way, but um, I don't even think I know where all three of them are. One in 2-2. Two um, there's one I pick up closer to her at the end, and then we both know the other one, the last one, is in, is after the boss rush just before King Drool himself. Yeah, I think it's the final level, basically. Yeah, it's just like, it's it's hard to miss it. Yeah, so the waterfall sections of any Bonk game are very tricky, because they just put tons of enemies out there. So you're lucky if you're if you're not dying at all on those parts. And once you start dying, it can be hard to, to escape that. So thankfully you only took that one death because you had a little little low health, but uh, you're you're looking great on lives and health, so everything should be great. I'm gonna be making our way into this is the round five boss, is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the longer boss fights, just there's no real quick kill to it. I think you can get it in one cycle, but you have to sacrifice a lot of health. But it's one of the one of the lamer bosses as far as like the rest of the bosses are pretty cool and interesting. This one's just a submarine. That was really good. That was that was probably pretty close to, to getting done in one cycle. I honestly have no clue what a one cycle is, if it exists. Yeah, I think you have to be bonking maybe in the front, like un maybe the under bonks are not doing quite as much damage, but I mean, that's mm -hmm. about as fast as I ever do it, for sure. I was wondering, I've always wondered about that since, since even if you're above the turtle, I, can, I don't know if the hits value more. I think it, traditionally in the bonk games, if you if you do a bonk like with the the underside, like if you're hitting them from under with your head, that it's a little less damage. It might mm. be half damage, but I think for that boss, you basically just have to hit him as much as you can, no matter what. All right, round six gets to be really tricky. There's there's some really difficult platforming levels. Uh, they throw another ice level in here just to to make you mad. <laughs> uh, there's there's a lot of really dangerous enemies, including these guys right here. That little uh, it looked kind of like a boar is the is the witch doctor boss from Bonk's Revenge. So there's actually a few Bonk's Revenge sprites kind of miniaturized. The Bonk's Revenge bosses miniaturized here. So like this robot is one of the final bosses of Bonk's Revenge, and those hands are terrifying because they just yeah. follow you everywhere. <laughs> 
Oh, but you got a good jump off of that. Oh, can you get uh, there? I oh, always, not quite. I always miss that. Yeah, so if you can get up there, then you can you can get to a... I think that's where the fifth heart is, right? Extra heart. I or maybe, it's, I've seen maybe, it's, maybe it's just a health power-up. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a heart here, at least not yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just like a big heart, so it's something to like fill up your health. And if you can get up there, it's I think it is faster than just trying to make your way across the level. If you can stay high. Oh my god, that animation when the, the little dino was chewing on Bonk and he's flailing his legs, that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of the best animations of the game, and I hate it so much because <laughs> you can't do anything about it. Yeah, it just looks slow, but it's a nice animation. Yeah. Like, this game is, is actually a lot of fun casually, but it's also just really difficult. Um, it's one of those where uh, it's it's pretty unforgiving, especially the later levels, and the checkpoints are, like, in really tough spots. So, like, I think if you die anywhere on the final, final stage or final round, you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the boss rush, which we're going to be coming up to here soon. And there's still quite a bit of game after the boss rush. Yeah, that can be pretty tricky to get up there. Uh, you want to get probably up to the top here and make your way back right. But the mechanics on the ice are really hard to deal with because you're basically having to mash the jump button there. Like when you see he's like kind of running fast. The mechanic isn't that you can just hold right and walk. You actually have to be mashing the jump button as you're trying to move. And this part especially is terrible. <laughs> but Infinite Mystery did it perfectly. It's like you just want to knock those guys out as soon as they're within striking range. All right, I'm done with that dumb ice level. Yeah, this is where um, the fi um, a, fi a fifth heart is. Although it's it's not out of the way, but it's actually very inconveniently placed. Yeah. Oh, I think I did. I, I did see this in your run. So I, I think you totally schooled me because I had no idea where this heart was. But... Do you have to get and be small bonk to get in here, or just regular size bonk? Oh, I see. You have to you have to bounce off those clouds and kind of sneak in there. Yeah, it looks like you can't quite get under there otherwise. But you also get this flower power up out of it, so hopefully you can hold on to that for a little bit. Yeah, the pterodactyls that show up now, I'm not fond of their plate. Of their plate. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, they they love to to dive bomb you. I feel like the the fastest way to do this part is to just try to avoid all enemies entirely and kind of route yourself around them. But it's also like if you miss one, then they're all going to be coming for you basically. And also by the time you're done with this part, you do want to get back to the like kind of regular size bonk because oh yeah, that's this is actually is this the first time we've seen the the big bonk in this run? In this I level? Believe, I believe so. Yeah. I always like to say in uh, when I do my runs, like you won't see the big bonk power up until the very final level. So just the way I have it routed, there's actually only one time you have to be big bonk in the whole run. At the very end. Is big bonk just slower? Yeah, big bonk is really slow. Um, and and any time you get hit as big bonk, you're just going to immediately shrink down to the regular size bonk so the hitbox is is very strange so it seems like pretty much anywhere you get hit on it is is gonna shrink you down so you can imagine if you're a huge enemy that it's pretty easy to get hit with it too now the task does a lot of a lot of this run as the mini bonk which is actually very difficult to do hmm. because the the placement of hitting enemies when you're the mini bonk is very difficult but you can move very quickly when you're mini. Now this boss can be pretty tricky, but IM's got him lined up perfectly. So yeah, didn't look tricky at all. Awesome. For some reason, it's the only boss that King Drool decided to let his to let his sub subordinates take over. Yeah, it's the little uh, hatchet guys. I, I I don't know the official name. I think they have hatchet in the name. Oh, and here's here's where we're going to get the lore. You're going to finally understand the story. So K 
King Droll has the moon underwater at a secret base. <laughs> what? And so we're going to have to go into a secret base underwater. Uh, I didn't know Bonk could swim underwater that well, but here we go. He just has the moon chained to the ocean floor. <laughs> yeah, it, it, he's tired of taking it away like right in broad daylight, so now he's hit it under the ocean. <laughs> so this is the boss rush level, and you can take on these bosses in any order you like. Uh, it isn't all the bosses. It's only, I think, the first four. Yeah, that's I think it's cool. the first four, because the fifth one is the submarine, and that's not in here. And... I wouldn't like that again. Yeah, <laughs> it's slow. Yeah, but this is definitely the the hardest of the boss rush, for sure. And unfortunately, that's that's what you'll see. If, if you didn't get on his head and stay up on his head, then this fight becomes a little more difficult, because you just have to... Try to maneuver around while he's he's able to move around a lot more. But okay, yeah, we're done now, so this is great. Yeah, you can you can lose a couple lives on that boss, and it's it's going to be pretty pretty bad time. But thankfully, there's a big heart that refills every time we beat one of these bosses, so you can just as long as you're not losing a life, you can get full health again. It's also worth noting that even if you do collect the extra hearts, even if you do lose a life. You won't start off with full, with all full health. It'll always start out as just a three. Yeah. And I believe if you get a game over, those all reset. But we're not going to get any game over on this run, so. Yeah. See, that's this is what happens when you're when you were under the the crab boss and you have to kind of bonk your head under. You're not doing quite as much damage, but you're able to still safely get hits on him. It's just you'll probably also be getting hit in the process as he's moving around. I honestly just wanted to show the crab boss, the crab part, um, bomb one more time, but oh well. <laughs> oh, I believe you. <laughs> Everybody loves crab bomb. <laughs> Real crowd pleaser. Yeah, so they, there's not too many quick kills on these bosses, as I said. That that giant you can do a little quicker and kind of get him down in one phase. This one, the only way you can really do quicker is you can kind of spin around at the top and bounce off the wall. But it can be hard to kind of juggle him and stay up there the whole time. So this is definitely the safest way to, to take it on. And ideally, you're not landing on those spikes there, but <laughs> they don't do a ton of damage. You get a free heal afterwards anyway, so. That, that's right. Yeah, and uh, I think memory has in the task where it ends up like right on top of the spikes, but like right when you lose your, uh, like right when you have invincibility frames. So it's just kind of showing off like, hey, it's not going to hurt you eventually. So. <laughs> and as I said, we're going to save this, this easiest boss for last. Have a little bit of a break. And we'll just be able to spin around on top of it and get it done. The Final Fantasy Bomb boss. Easy peasy. This is, look, this is looking really great on time, too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going into the final round here, which of course is called Final. It's a great name for it. <laughs> I do miss that they didn't continue the tradition in Bonk's Revenge where they name the levels. It's just so much fun. Yeah. They have names for all the levels. I wonder if they just weren't creative enough to come up with names for all of them, or if they were just lazy. It's like, look how much, look how much work we're putting into these sprites and all these different power-ups. We don't have time to name levels. <laughs> oh, I saw that in your in your last run. Like, let's let's go to do a bonus stage. Why not? <laughs> it's just right on the path there. It's hard to avoid. The one caveat about the CD version is that those versus doors are kind of in the way in certain areas. You know, I don't know if I had ever seen them. So uh, I wonder if are they unique to the CD version entirely? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's a terrible spot to put one. It's like right in the path you want to go. Uh-oh. 
That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that big me was like, nope, not having it, and fell right through. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Yeah, I was super unlucky. It, you really only need it to kind of get some some extra speed going through this part, so. Yeah. Guess it could have been worse. Yeah, and I think if it's if it was the uh, like this this ice part is actually really easy compared to the last one, so you don't need like extra health at the beginning of this. Because when you have the full meat power up, you actually get two free hits basically. So if you get hit once, then you're going to shrink down to the small meat power up. Uh, I think it's the same way with both the small and big bonk, is that you won't actually lose health. I could be That's wrong on that one. So this this I like to call the different uh, the different rooms of Drool's uh, final lair here. Is we're actually just going to be going through like all the different rooms of his house. Some of them you won't be able to see as well because uh, I am just going to be flying over the top of them. But right here, this is Drool's kitchen. Uh, obviously, it's where you expect an evil king to be eating dinner. Uh, so I guess that was actually really the dining room. This is more of the kitchen because you, you've got the stove here. And these fireballs that are shooting up, which, yeah, I was going to say, are we even going to be able to see them? <laughs> so we sneak by there, and then we're going to be making our way into Drool's bathroom. Which I think, if you do this this way, you don't actually see my my favorite enemy in this game, is the Nightmare Emoji Baby. So <laughs> we're, actually, we're actually flying over Drool's nursery, because of course he has a baby that is a giant smiley face. Which yeah, it's like it's like despawned right there, or maybe they don't they don't show up in the CD version. It shows up, but it's, it gets despawned quite a bit, quite often. Yeah, it's interesting because I think we did see it earlier in the run. Because uh, I don't I don't usually think to look out for it there, but we did see it earlier when when you had missed the flower power up to fly up that you had to kind of like get down into a crib and see that enemy. It's hilarious to see. Oh, totally. It's terrifying. It's definitely the worst. <laughs> worst, most scary enemy. And yet it does nothing to you. <laughs> and then, yeah, exactly. And here's Drool's toilet, and you have to make your way into a septic tank. Uh, and thankfully, you killed that smoochy fish, because that, that will really wreck your day. If you come down here, and then you get immediately eaten and have to make your way through. Yeah, so it sounds like it's not a threat to Bonk, it's just a threat to the player. <laughs> Not a threat to Bonk, yeah. Yeah, the the, the smiley face baby, you know. Yeah, Bonk is like, scared well, of you, that we are. Yeah, if you want, uh, if you want more gameplay, like it's it's just uh, kind of difficult for the uh, the speedrunner. <laughs> yeah, because somehow Bonk won't get digested at all. He just ends up in the stomach and has to work his way out. All right, so we're gonna be working our way into the final final stage. So this is where I was pointing out this like this is the only required big bonk power up in the whole game because you have to have big bonk to be able to jump up these walls right here with your little head bonk. But once you're up here, you don't have to be big anymore. It's kind of fun to be big though, especially when you've got this flying power up. <laughs> the, the flying power up doesn't gain size. It's the same size. <laughs> Yeah, so we're not really sure how it's able to keep you aloft like that, but it's it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, I think the only tricky part is that right there. Yeah, where you have to knock that guy out of the air. It, he can still eat you while you're huge bonk right there, so... That's scary. I'm not sure how, but... <laughs> <laughs> and getting one last... One last health power up for the very end here. And you're looking excellent on lives. It's, uh... It, it should be a, a pretty easy boss fight. This is going to be a great run. All right, making our way into the final boss. So we have to fight Drool. We've been seeing him all game, just kind of teleporting away. We've been so close. But now we finally get to see the huge King Drool. Now, he's he's always so much bigger than you in these games, but he's also he also does not want it out on the action of being able to change his size as well. So after you get a certain amount of hits in here, and believe me, this guy's hitbox is super weird. So 
He's gonna shrink down more to your size, so now you got like regular bonk size drool, which is a lot of fun. I'm not on the normal size hitbox. <laughs> now, if you hated that hitbox, you'll really hate the smallest drool hitbox. But wow, you did a really good job because if you if you get just a couple hits in there, uh, it's gonna turn into the hugest drool, which we can barely even see on the screen. Can't even can't even show up on the whole top part of the screen. So we've only got one more cycle of this where he's kind of his normal size and the smaller size and then the smallest size. And then we're going to go to the biggest size to finish it off. But like I said, looking really excellent on lives and health here. All right. I think you got the hits in. Hopefully. I never know, though. I'm always like, okay, walk it off, walk it off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely want to try to get him from the top, but yeah, the it's it's really hard to hit like kind of in the crown area. There you go, an even smaller hitbox when he's tiny like this. Come on, walk off, walk off. There he goes. Okay, so he walks off, and now this is the final few hits we're gonna have here. The big, the biggest drool, and once we get looks like one more hit in, it'll be time. And. Time. Yeah. All right. That was excellent run. How bad that, was it? That bus that that that's uh forty one twenty four. That's not that's not bad at all. Yeah, that boss fight can be really tough, like to to get done quickly. I think anytime I'm on a good pace, I, I tend to lose time right at that boss fight, and it's it's like it gets really frustrating because you're like, I swear I got the hits in. Wait, it's only half the moon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you only stole half the moon. Like, so the rest of the moon's still up in the sky. We're just, we're gonna get the moon back <laughs> all together in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I it was like... The moon so much to be on me. <laughs> I thought he shoved it down in the ground and made like a crater or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Infinite Mystery for showing this off. I think this is the first GDQ event we've had Bonk, Bonk 3 played for. And thank you, Great John, for helping me with commentary. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Hopefully yep. everybody else enjoyed it as well. Thanks again to both of you for showing this off. It was uh, <laughs> it was quite an interesting game. I just thought, found myself sitting back there just watching all the animations pretty frequently. <laughs> so as yeah, a, I would... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, this uh, This game has uh, just a couple of runners with Infinite Mystery and I. Uh, I know there's been some other bonk runners that have expressed some interest, but it is it is a bit of an intimidating game because it, it's kind of difficult casually, but it, it is a lot of fun once you learn kind of the mechanics of this game. So I, I would definitely encourage some more runners to, to try it out. Mm -hmm. And where should they go if they want to check it out? There is a uh, Bonk Discord, and I believe that's linked in at least one of the uh, speedrun.com uh, pages. I, I know it is for, I want to say, Bonk's Adventure and Bonk's Revenge, but uh, we'll make sure it's out there for Bonk 3 as well. All right. So if you uh, want to check out this game, just head over to the Bonk Discord and uh, hit up some of these friendly folks to get started. But... Thanks again for running this for us. That's uh, the end of our Infinite Mystery block, so thanks again for showing these two games for us, Infinite. Thank you for having me. There, and... There's also, uh, just real quick, sorry, there's uh, there's also a TurboGrafx-16 Discord that I should plug as well, so that, um, that one may not be linked in some of these, but shoot us a message and we can get you an invite if you're interested in that. Sounds good. And uh, coming up next, we're going to be closing out the show today with our last run of the night. It's going to be Streets of Rage 4 by Shin Kenso. So stick around for that. As a quick reminder for people who were not here at the start of the show, uh, we're going to take a quick break, play a few ads. Uh, and if you have any Twitch Prime sitting around, uh, for the whole month of June, we will be donating all of our subs and bit revenue to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. If you're not familiar with what that is, you can type exclamation point NAACP LDF in chat. There's some links there where you can check it out. It's a really good cause. But stick around for just a few minutes and we'll have Streets of Rage 4 by Kenso.
I'm doing great, doing great, doing great. Ready to get this run started. Uh, I can open up a little bit of a preface. So, Streets of Rage 4 is a very combo heavy game. It is very close to fighting games. Uh, if anything to know about me is I'm very big in the fighting game community. I'm a Guilty Gear player. Um, play a lot of other games too, but this game ve very much so lends itself, you know, a lot of mechanics from fighting games. So it really pushes the Streets of Rage series like very much so like further into a more combo heavy game. So I'll be explaining more obviously as we go. Um, and Adam's really cool. It's really glad to have him back in the series because he's been away for a while now. Uh, your timer got reset. Did that happen when you, uh... Yes. Okay. So can you just start that when you start the run? It'll make sure that your webcam stays in sync. Sure thing. But, uh, with that, I'm ready to go when you are. Okay, sure. Let's see here. Let's move over back here to the game. So we're going to do arcade mode. We're going to play hard. Uh, currently right now, I do have the world record for this difficulty at the moment. Uh, I'm third on Mania, and I have record on Easy, but uh, today it's going to be hard because it's uh, more marathon safe than Mania, and a lot less stressful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why don't you give us a countdown, David? All righty, you ready, Kevin? Yes, sir. All right, on three, two, one, go. Alright, stage one. Pretty standard streets of rage stage. Nothing uh too tricky here. Yeah, nothing too tricky overall. Um one the good thing about Adam, he's one of the few characters that can actually run in this game, as opposed to like just, you know, jump and jumping forward like Floyd or Axel in this particular series. Definitely, definitely. Uh, for those that are watching, you're going to hear a lot of clicking because uh, I was initially started out running this game on keyboard and I've since switched to Hitbox since I play fighting games on Hitbox. So it's a lot more comfortable for me. So you're going to be hearing a lot of clicking. It's a really good scene to change. Uh, it's a really good refreshing scene to see like a lot of these enemies coming back from the from the trilogy. Because it's been like forever since like what early the 1990s since the mm -hmm. trilogy came out, and just being able to see a lot of the returning characters coming back, as well as you know a couple of new faces, especially for Cherry in this gun and Floyd. But it's great to see Axel and Blaze back in this game, and of course Adam, of course your favorite. Of course, character. Adam. I've been waiting to play Adam since Streets of Rage. But yeah, um, so far this is just a, a street stage going through. Um, you're going to be definitely seeing a lot of different specials. What's different about in this particular game than the trilogies, of course, is the added air special, which he'll use uh, time to time, which could definitely help getting through A, getting to different places besides dashing, or B, to do like extra damage to, not, uh, to be able to secure the kill on the enemies. Not to mention that there's also a uh, star specials now. So everyone has like a super move. As I mentioned before, this game takes a lot of things from fighting games. So these supers are another thing that's added here. And speaking of new faces, the Kubos. Kubo, definitely one of the new characters to see. So he's definitely going to do the jab locking here, which helps. Doesn't do a lot of damage as opposed to doing like long combos, but obviously it secures the kill. Definitely secures the kill. It's going to be a lot of jab locking with him, but only on so many enemies. More so the Kubos and the uh, second, second boss. And also you'll see... Uh, some of the other characters that you notice that there's not from any other ones, like the Dylans that you see here, you've never seen that before. Due to the series. 
new to the series as well for enemies, but obviously the signals, the Donovans, Galzias, you know, all the fun jank with Galcia and his knife, because he's like definitely the best enemy in the game. He is the best enemy in the game. Next to Barney. Can't forget about Barney. <laughs> You'll definitely see him in the next stage for sure. But this little, the first stage is just straightforward, knocking them down. And uh, what's really interesting, what's really cool about this game, uh, is actually they uh, is they actually have a dedicated pickup button now instead yes. of uh, the original where you actually have to be on top of the item. Because in the original trilogy, if you're on top of the item, it prioritizes picking up the items first before the before doing the attacks. And right now here, Kenzo's gonna do. Probably the most infamous thing that has been found for this game, and it's known Boot as loops. Boot Loops. Part of a balanced breakfast for him. Hey, hey, hey! Just okay. a preface. This is what it's we're playing on right here. It's a lovely thing. All right, that's stage one. So oh, about the infinite there, in order to obtain the infinite on that point is um, you had to do a charge boot attack or charge attack, and then you had to cancel to a back attack into a Kara. So you had to do a boot attack, cancel back attack into another boot. But in order to obtain that, you have to every every in this game they introduce juggles in this series, and every enemy has three wall bounces. So if you break all three. Anything after, anything hitting the wall after the third one, it just doesn't bounce back, and it starts going down. It's always, you know, just floating down, which at that point, you'll be able to do the boot loops, as you saw early, on Stage 1 D.Va. So he just goes in, stomping on everybody with his Air Force Ones. That sounds about right. <laughs> Alright, in Stage 2 here is going to be the introduction to the, uh, the police cops. Barney, as you see right here, is the one that a lot of people really hate. Just because of his grab, uh, because he always starts with a tape. And also, he his grab range is really long. But you always company with like the dicks and the other cops in the in the game as well. But definitely a new face to the new face to the franchise. And the main reason why he you see the cops now is because everyone is following the the main boss, which is spoilers i guess the Y, uh, which is the y twins which i'll talk more about the y twins a little bit later on the kids of the uh infamous the late mr x late mr x yeah yep but they uh they uh they're basically following orders from them giving them money so and that's why these guys uh the yeah, right. care of the elements just going to stop the bad guys as usual. All right, introductions to shield cops. And the shield cops will always have a shield uh, and also a weapon, depending uh, of choice. Most likely the baton, but uh, you'll see them later with tasers, which is obviously annoying. But it also helps us in the run. You'll see a taser later in the run that we're going to use to help set up set up the boot loops which which you'll see the boot loops entirely in this run like i would say 75 percent of it because that's what you mainly do that on the boss fight and also in the runs you won't you'll see at least a couple of reps of it all right they didn't spawn out yeah all the of course in this game uh there's also a lot of different triggers uh like there are things that will trigger the boss uh, enemies to come out, or even uh, tr 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 uh, that triggers the bosses to come out, which you'll see them, which you'll definitely need them in the screen, or you could just avoid it and have like diff uh, different enemies, and that's you'll see that a lot more in the harder difficulties known at in, for like mania and stuff. So right now we have here is boss stage two, the commissioner, Buff Gordon. Duff, Duff Gordon. Gordon. Duff Gordon. Excuse me. Looks like Commissioner Gordon from the, the Batman anime series. But um, big reason why you won't see him doing the boot loops here is because 
of the random cops that will spawn out later on and uh, that you'll see here. So you'll see a couple of policemen can try and will definitely do whatever they can to interrupt Adam from doing his boot loop. So this is the alternate way of, you know, beating the commish down. I'm doing this jab block. Jab block is uh, one of the other ways to uh, keep them in tight. Kind of brings back the old, you know, Streets of Rage 2 feel of when Axel, you know, just Axel does jab jab forever and ever. Yeah, the thing about it is you don't want him to do what just happened there. I kind of dropped it intentionally so you guys can kind of see that. What ends up happening is Barney comes out and they just it's a just it's just a bad time. The commissioner's AI just starts going crazy and it's a lot harder to keep him in check. So the goal is to just jab lock him and keep resetting that so that he doesn't go doesn't go haywire. Alright. It's chapter three. Our hero's here. Right, he's going to the cargo ship, trying to run away from the cops again. Trying to find the culprit. Try to find the white ones to be honest because you see uh at the end of stage two you're gonna you you will be in, you'll count on mr y who was offered them money and axel's like nah i don't need your money we don't need your we bring justice. we don't need your money we bring we justice your filthy dirt dirty money and you'll see a lot more of the uh environmental items in this game starting with the barrels that you see right there which obviously flammable if it gets touched There we go. There we go. All Ooh, right. Yeah. Now we reintroduce Big Ben and Super Armor. Yeah, with Big Ben here, that Tatsu, as he did the Tatsu, completely, uh, completely has armor on this particular version of the game, as opposed to like the first in the trilogy, which he could, you know, do some damage. Has some armor here, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since, you know, we all play Streets of Rage because, you know, it's been that long since we all played Streets of Rage. <laughs> all right. All right. Get rid of him, grab the pipe, move up, get your charge boot ready. Boom. 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 So the whole goal is just to pretty much walk them down all the way to the edge. Mm hmm. We hit the catwalk, obviously. So we're gonna take care of all the enemies trying to stop our heroes from going into the next boss coming up. But this, in this particular screen, this is the only time you get to see where you can't move vert. Uh, you can't move vertically. You can only move horizontally. Only use horizontally. Funnily enough, the enemies can actually go out of bounds and go <laughs> downwards, and actually hit you out of bounds, and you can't hit them. So stage three, we get to see Nora with her intense whipping. Her special powers actually gives a power to Galzia, which you, if you actually hit the Galzia, there'll be a bunch of A's. So super Galzia for this point. Gives oh, them, no. uh, pretty much gives them a, uh, a an extra bonus. But here we're gonna take some cheese. We could do some boot loops here, but obviously with a bunch of Galzia being spawning, you're not gonna be able to do that freely. But yeah, you get the star power here. So the goal is to try to hit her onto that spike wall and try to hold her there. But we're not really getting lucky right now with that. So we gotta just pretty much fight her normally. Super should be dead. Sweet. So yeah, normally you wanna try to hit her there because if you can lock her there, that's pretty much game time. It does so much damage to her. And you basically want to use your backward special and try to leech life off of the um, the green health off of the uh, Galcia. And speaking of this game, uh, speaking of green health, every in this particular version of the game, uh, in this at least in four, if you do a special, it will take off health. But in this game, in four here, it gives you green health, which is health that you would lose if you were to get hit. But you get to be able to regenerate the green health the more you do combos. So the more you hit the enemies, you'll regain that. For This is just basically for risk and reward type. You could definitely stay safe and not do specials at all, but to, to like for speed run wise, you definitely want to do specials. Want to make it, knock them down really quickly. 
And then obviously if you continue the combo, you'll be able to regenerate that green health, basically rewarding you for doing all the great combos that you did. And yep. another thing about this one is uh, in this game here, there, as opposed to this trilogy as well, this game is really gracious with items. Especially with uh, and with the health items, you'll see a lot of the apples. You'll see a lot of the turkeys here that you normally a lot more than you'll never ever see in the other games itself. One because there's no one ups that you'll randomly get in such as like two and three, and uh, but it helps a lot for the uh, the harder difficulties. Okay, so there there's a trick we do where we throw like a knife or any throwing item at the enemies here, so we can. We can take away the shields from the shield cops and basically kind of throw them off center right as you start this section. Very, very important for dealing with Barney and because at this point if there's two Barneys and you don't really want to deal with those guys. You want them out of the picture as quickly as you can. Okay. Some health heals, play it safe. Okay, we're going to take this knife here. You want to try to keep a knife on screen there so you can get rid of the scouts here that's sitting down. And you can get straight away into it. <laughs> Knife in this game actually does good damage, uh, especially when you're tossing them. Every character who throws a knife does the same amount of damage, as opposed to like which every other character, which when they're when they do a jab, they you know they do a fixed amount depending on who's the character. But this is really good for you know item management on the screen. Mm -hmm. They really made knives super good in this game. And this is newcomer, Estelle, new to the series. So yeah, in this particular, uh, for Estelle here, uh, enemies will respawn if you reach to a different, uh, to reach a threshold in her health. But since we're gonna do the uh, the infinite here, as long as she doesn't touch the ground, you know, she can't call reinforcement. She can't go right. backup or request it. She can't say backup requested, no more backup. <laughs> <laughs> More back though. So this is where the boot loops comes in really handy for this particular run. It is still difficult uh, difficult for casuals, but once you get practicing, you'll be able to get boot loops down, at least especially for Adam. And other characters uh, besides Adam have infinites, uh, infinites in this game. I know Floyd does have uh, a different couple of var varieties of it, uh, bl same as Blaze as well. So we're now going through the underground here, which we'll see the, you know, the better versions of Donovan's Dal T. Yeah. So sometimes in this this stage in particular has really weird spawns. So you kind of have to be wary of that. Oh, I didn't get it at the right right angle. I tried to do the uh, the Mighty Bill setup. Shout out to my boy Bill. It's my Adam brother. Oop. All yeah. right. Got oh yeah. Angle. And I forgot, Adam uh, Axel has two infinites, two uh, two of more of the jab infinites type thing, two variations of it. Forgot about that character. I only say that I only say about that because I keep forgetting that Axel is the actual character. Because a lot of people, uh, he's actually pretty hard in this particular game. Axel's in the game. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> nah, he's just uh, definitely slow uh, than like other characters. Like I, Cherry's really fast. She doesn't have an infinite. Well, she does have an infinite, does she? She has a Yeah, the Blitz loop. But every other character has like better variations of infinite that does more damage. Mm hmm. Which, in, in speedrun wise, I mean, obviously, you could definitely still run Axel in speedrun wise. And, you know, for those who are really loyal to that character, you could definitely do it. Just like everybody else just goes a lot more quicker. He just. Axel just like old man has old man status who needs Tiger Bomb or Ben Gay to you know speed yeah. him up. Yeah, Axel currently is not very strong in this game, but he is very fun to play. All right, it's gonna bring a special here. Try to get a lot of the damage, especially on the Kubo and Big Ben. Big Ben's are like. Like we said, stated earlier, it's just really annoying to deal They're with. They're one of the most annoying enemies in the game, seriously. So we're out of the underground into a bar here. This is all the graffitis, uh, the graffitis 
And there's a lot in this particular game. Uh, uh, what I really love about this particular game is there's a lot of different Easter eggs throughout the whole the whole, the whole game. So in like Wait. early in two, early in two, there was like a graffiti for like Axel Stone. Um, you'll see something uh, later on in uh, the one that I like the most is uh, the White Tower, which is uh, which I'll get I'll point it out when we get to it. But uh, now we're gonna see the bike new to this series. Basically, going to try to headbutt people around. One thing to talk about in terms of Adam. Since Adam is the only character in the game that can dash at the moment. <laughs> you know, Cherry can run and uh, Adam can dash. When Adam dashes right next to an enemy, he'll pass through and go to the other side, which really helps out for changing positions to do like infinite or... Just really dishing out damage. So you'll see me try to hit that uh, every now and again. Just to make sure I can swap sides, stay safe, or whatever I need, basically. <laughs> okay. What's really fun, that's one of the fun things I see from Adam is like, you could do like jab, jab, dash behind the enemy, dash, jab, jab, dash behind the enemy again, jab, jab, and just do that. It's just like, man, where, where am I at? <laughs> Even though it's like it's, it's just for fun, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. But you know, it's really great. Uh, it's it's really great to see. And uh, throughout the series, there's actually arcade cabinets in this game. Just there's one up there. There, there's an actual like a secret that you can actually do with it. So if you grab a taser and you tase the arcade, they'll unlock like a special SOR two boss fight, which rewards you to get a star. Now we hear Bourbon stage one of Streets of Rage two. You know, he picked up the taser to set up the final fight a lot more easier, so he could just boot loop away. Cause he gets to be he gets to be a little bit of aggroish. Yeah, Barbon AI is pretty annoying actually. And casually, oh, yeah. if you if you take out the bikes, you have to deal with the biker girls too. But uh, here with Adam, we get to say hi, Barman, and bye, Barman. <laughs> See you later, guy. Oh yeah, and Rue was in the background of uh, in the mm -hmm. right before the end, which hopefully we'll see him soon. Hopefully, hopefully. But in that man, definitely have a good bartender from Rue. All right, Chinatown, next stage here. Uh, this is actually the longest stage in the game. Uh, definitely, you'll see a lot more enemies, but and a lot more more introductions from the series itself. That is pretty big, big enemies. That is, you'll see later on, but. Oh, Enjoy them. This is such a it's a wonderful music. One of my favorite. One of my favorite stages in the game. OST wise. Yeah, and don't this, forget, is, this is like the most Streets of Rage song in this whole game. Seriously. Oh. The kickboxers. These guys are actually pretty notorious for messing up speedruns on this level and in White Tower. White Tower, they're probably the worst. Um, funny thing enough, oh, I got outrange. This item here is actually an Easter egg item. <laughs> the uh, stop sign. This this weapon does a massive amount of damage. Like two of these, and you can pretty much two shot any any enemy. <laughs> and of course, it does carry on. To, uh, carry on from Streets of Rage 3 is the number of uses. So every item, you can definitely use it to how many times and it'll just break. So I know like the uh, the knife, you get to use it like, a few times before it breaks. Same thing with the like the long spear. Chopper, uh, the uh, the butcher knife. Probably one of the, un the most underrated items in this game. Oh, totally. It's one of the best items actually in the game. And you only get it in this stage. It, and it's really it's really helpful in speedruns because one it doesn't it just continue when you throw the butcher knife it just keeps going and going and going. Mm -hmm. It just it literally just passes through enemies, so it's really good for like if you need to just like aggro something you can just use it there. Yeah, yeah, you'll definitely see you'll see its use a little bit later at this stage because you're gonna eventually meet a lot of different enemies. And clean them quickly is the best way to do so. With the butcher knife, obviously. Oh, 
Man, the guy in, in the background just eating ramen while you're just where you're facing the big fence. Kind of want some of that for dinner too. <laughs> oh, then turn around. All right, get some health. All right, played it cool there. Just got a little bit of health. Two health items here, and there's two other health items up in there. We're not gonna utilize this can right here because we can in areas where there's like no wall. You can actually start up the boot loops right away. Just gotta know your combos. For anyone interested in learning this game, I'll tell you right now, that's one of the biggest things to know. You gotta learn your combos. You gotta make sure you know your damage. Uh, when I was routing this game with Adam, I used the community doc that was made to uh, route out combos to do actual damage. So I knew how much damage to actually kill certain bosses. But other than the boot loops to kill, like for the DJ, for example, later on, uh, I had to wrap that out and figure out and calculate how much damage I needed to do for that boss in particular. So, learn your combos. Uh, this room is notorious for snatching runs no matter what difficulty. Because as we mentioned before, Galaxia is like the scariest enemy in the game. Yeah, any any item Galcia makes them top tier. <laughs> top, instant top tier. So we're gonna be going to the room of Donovan's. Still the gauntlet. We're going through over everything. Alright, so the goal here is to get to the side with the first cleaver. It is RNG which one comes out on which side. But the goal is just the same. You want to make sure you try to grab it because it passes through all the enemies and it makes it so much easier to deal with the Donovans. Baseball bats, fun. Oh, baseball bats is fun. Now we hold on to one here because in this room in particular, you want to take out the uh, the guy with the dark blue trunks because if you do, no more kickboxers will spawn. So we try to avoid uh, the red trunks as much as possible. This should kill. All right, cool. Nicely done right there. There we have it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. Yeah. And now we get to see a familiar face. This guy yeah. right here. The mm. returning face. This time in uh, in this particular game, uh, he's more of in the neutral stance uh, as opposed to like being on Mr. X. He's like, oh, why? They, he, he just doesn't believe in how why does it. But yeah. Boot loose for days. It works for that. Shiva. Hello, Shiva. Bye, Shiva. This is also Black Ace's favorite song. It's definitely one of the best songs, I think, in my opinion. This whole stage itself is beautiful. And if you do this in the best time, it just gives you the best feeling. Just because it's the longest stage in the game. It is definitely like the that. longest stage. It's one of the longest stages. I'd say the last stage is just as long. But that's that's for different reasons. <laughs> okay, Sky Train. This is my favorite song, and I, I love this stage. It's so it's so beautiful. You know, it wouldn't be a beat 'em up without a train stage, right? <laughs> I agree with that. Yes, I do agree with that. I'm. The thing about this stage is, I mean, you're you're a huge fan of uh, drum and bass, so that that gives you something about that. But um, in this particular stage, this is actually the shortest stage of the game. Yeah. Which kind of sucks, it's like, I want to hear more of this song, you know? <laughs> I know, right? Apex Chain, so good. Okay, had to stall out on that a little bit. Now we gotta get our life back. Also, using items actually gives you your HP back as well. So if you just use like a, a bat or a knife, it will give you your life back. Also, something you guys have been seeing me do this entire run is uh, special canceling the blitz attack, which is the dash attack in this game. Basically, you can cancel it into any one of your special moves. So neutral special, forward special. So in Adam's case, it's the gut punch. This move here, you can cancel the first hit right into any special or super. All right, let's swag out a little bit there. All right, this is one of the few stages that has hazards. You can see this is kind of like a like a shout out to Shinobi. If you ever played Revenge of Shinobi and you are familiar with the stages in that game? Oh my gosh. Barney is trying to mess up my day, dude. <gasps> this is scary. 
Don't jump at me! Uh, Alright, we got him out. <laughs> and the return of Estelle. Hey, Estelle, how you doing? Now, this time she has different AI. She actually throws grenades now. Yep. And, uh, she's... If I remember, isn't she, like, a little bit more aggressive? But uh, what definitely for sure, though, she's, like, she's not as scary as the first one. Where the first one, she has armor, if you actually fight through her uh, normally. I mean, if you have the infinite, you don't have to worry about everything else, obviously. But if you have to fight her uh, regularly with, like, Axel... Oh, it's not anything fun. like that. It's not. It's definitely like our in the first first stealth farm. You had to do with RNG. And this one, if you were to like, hey, you know, if you drop your infinite, here comes the commission. What's here comes up? the commissioner? And uh, on Mania, you get two commissioners, and their aggro is like insane. All right. Moving along here, we're in the museum. We're in the museum. A new introduction, kind of. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I played everything else but uh victorious they will carry different items to, depending on the environmental those victorious they throw you know flame bottles you'll see poison later on you'll see electric pop and then grenades so there's a different enemies depending on the uh, item that they'll pick it up they'll have so the flame bottles giving. actually do uh was it 60 damage per bottle so you have to be, they can literally one shot like Gaussias and like a bunch of other enemies. And in this stage in particular, we carry the golden turkey for the boss fight. So we're going to babysit that this entire stage. Yeah, it's great for Thanksgiving, obviously, uh, especially if you're like, you if you have family coming up, because you impress them with the Thanksgiving big turkey, especially in like six months, uh, five months from now. So <laughs> it's great for that, but uh, you'll definitely want to carry it. Um, you'll definitely want to carry it for the final boss because it help helps the speed run a lot more easier. Besides, you know the Thanksgiving power up. But all right, Got it again. a lot of spawning, a lot of enemies spawn in, in this next couple of stages. Um, as you see, a lot of the green trunks. Now you're gonna deal with a bunch of uh, grenade Victoria, toss. grenade tossers. Which, you can actually co uh, catch the grenades in time and throw it back. If you throw back the grenades, you don't get damage from your own grenade throws, which really helps a lot. Unless you're playing like Friendly Fire, that's a different story. <laughs> like co -op. <laughs> especially for co-op, that's a, that's a scary thing to have. Especially when uh, Kensu and I played co-op, we were just like, oh, <laughs> whoops, oops, we oops. threw a grenade and I'm like, and I landed on the grenade, I'm like, oh. Well oh. done. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. Uh, this is also another one of my favorite songs too. Yeah, this song is definitely like this state. Like for me, Chinatown, Sky Train, and this stage. Dude, do you hear that saxophone? So good. Big ups to the developers, man. They made a really good OST, man. Oh, he didn't die. He didn't die. He didn't die. Uh, take that. All right. So in this boss fight is two more divas, and uh, the trick here is to actually throw the, the turkey at the fire diva because the fire diva is very toxic. She's very she has one of the most annoying AIs, and her her flame pit it just it's not something you want to deal with. And we use supers to interrupt that because we don't want to get hit by that. We do sequence to those and do hers. Yeah. Yeah, you can also position. There's also a way you can position yourself to throw the golden turkey at both Bayo and Rina, Riha, and so th they both take the same amount of damage. But you know, but the, throwing it at the fire helps a lot, the most because yeah, like he said, it's the most. Fun. But great Easter eggs here with Beyonce and Rihanna. Love those. Right. <laughs> Shoutouts to them. Great music from them. That is what I would call the jump shot ender. <laughs> uh, I'm so far the only Adam player that goes for that conversion. Everyone else kind of just stays outside and does the other combos. I spent a lot of time labbing on his combos because you really need them. You need them. All right, Y Tower. This stage is infamous for killing runs on Mania. Let me tell you. 
Yeah. This stage, oh. this stage is pretty crazy overall. It brings to uh, what it brings this stage different from everything else is the ice element. So you'll be slipping on ice. That's why you see a lot of those signs where it says to you know watch out for slipping. Obviously, you don't get to slip. Otherwise, that's a crazy thing in this. Game. Yeah, that'd be a crazy mechanic. <laughs> But, you know, they got to wipe the floors, keep it clean, sanitize, you know, wash hands, everything like that for this uh, subway. Nah, this is the sauna. Oh, yeah, that's right, sauna. Oops. I keep thinking subway. <laughs> I, think I, think not, I, I think uh, I need to be careful on those sandwiches. You know, stop eating those for a bit. But, uh... Okay, then here we're gonna carry an unsuspected weapon, which is the mop. Now, I thought it was a troll at first, but this weapon's actually pretty OP. Agreed, actually, it, it's very durable, it's like, from a Swiffer what? I was like, that's crazy, it's like, I should buy a Swiffer what and see how, how strong that is in real life, you know? Alright, gonna have another Goro. The Goros here. The Goros in this particular, the second time is not as aggressive, not as annoying than the first time. It's still crazy. You st they're still annoying, obviously. Alright, cool. Remember these guys from Streets of Rage 3? They're back. These are what I call Suge Knight palettes. Know anything about Suge Knight? Those guys look like Suge Knight. <laughs> All right, still got a lot of HP. So here we're gonna try to break the glass where the enemies are at. Yeah, Specifically the, the right side for first. Uh, yeah, breaking the uh, breaking the glass helps so much because it you just fall to your death, just like in every ele elevator that you'll see in like other games so it could alter their demise which you know helps the speedruns allows you to go fast yep can I break it nope not fast enough oh got them both at the same time sweet oh nice that's a pretty good that for a second there i thought i was like oh no it's not gonna jump but glad that actually helped out a lot Right on time. You can go that way and that way again. Bye bye. All right. I dropped this the other day in practice. One more. There we go. One more big button. Got him. All right. Remember this guy, Streets of Rage 2? Max? Bruh. My man, Max. I miss that guy. But uh, unfortunately, he's brainwashed by the white twins as you can see the tw um, both twins x uh, mr x and miss y um miss y and mr y are sitting in the back in the middle but uh so we're gonna play it safe super get my life back get a full hp definitely. bar yeah luckily there's items that you could definitely kill but in, for boss uh for max in this in this boss fight he has a lot of armor and doesn't do anything. He's the easiest boss in the game, 100%. Probably. Uh, his, he has a couple moves he can do, but like the grab you can shake out of, everything else you can just use your neutral special to just get through it. And he's pretty much a pushover, unfortunately. Yeah. Wish we, need, wish we could, uh. Well, wish we could do something else about that, but who knows. Anyway, shout outs to uh, Charles Ben Brandino from that last stage. He was in the background too, if no one catches that. But here we are, the concert. Uh, we're here on the rooftops just because one, um, the twins are decided uh, already setting up a concert, which allows them to brainwash everybody. The same brainwashing technique that brainwash Max, Max. as you see there. So the heroes oh, here are going to be. It was nice there. to be. Dude, these the kickboxes are never nice to me in my own runs. I got lucky today. Yo, yeah. 
Luckily, like I said, there's um, luckily there's a, a hole you can just toss them out. I mean, you can still kill, you know, just beat them up in the long, you know, the old-fashioned way, just like you know, every other Street of Rage that you can do. <laughs> so yeah, back oh. everywhere else. This area is very notorious for the grenade girls tossing grenades off screen and you getting wombo comboed. I have lost so many runs on Mania to these girls tossing these grenades off screen, and it is super unfortunate, but it just happens like that. More, Gal More Galsios. Knife Galsios. AKA Jonathan and Joseph. Okay, can we handle Yeah. Uh, Big Ben's in this particular version, uh, they all do differently. Uh, they all do different attacks now, instead of just doing the flames, spitting flames, like just one particular version. So every different color has his own unique attack. So the Andy right here, he's just gonna roll around. And it's all super armored, so you just can't, like, you know, hit him out of it. He'll just hit continue him out to roll. You got the weight. Keep rolling and rolling. Right. Super Armor is one of the things a lot of uh, people have been complaining about casually. But uh, as you keep playing, you kind of just learn to deal with it. It's not so bad. Okay. Lots of time. You, like, we ha you have to invest time into learning, obviously. Just like you have learning your combos, learning the routes. Just like every speedrun. So. so here the goal is to try to use the Pendulum. A little wrecking ball. The wrecking ball, when it has when it has max momentum, does so much damage to enemies. And get the throw on that one. All right, cool. Man, did you got hit by that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's like a there's like a trick you can do to not get hit by it. Yeah. I, I messed it up, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh, speaking of that, he just saw one of the Donovans, AKZ. He just caught, like, a weapon thrown. Yeah, in this particular game, uh, in this game, the Gals uh, the Zs and the Goodens, if you were to throw a, a small item at them, either a knife or a hammer, they'll catch, like, an amazing wide receiver in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Oh, I better grab this. Almost up yeah. that star. Gotta make sure we get that. So we don't use stars in this stage because the DJ actually has 500 HP. And I'm gonna do my best to land the combo that kills him in one shot. If not, there's other, you know, there's an alternative route you can go for. Yeah, the DJ has shields. So for the, like, I think it was like a hundred and somewhat somewhat uh, health of shield. If you break it, he just comes to a... Oh, I dropped. It didn't let me tech roll. Oh, right, so no. Yeah, this... This... Oh, and he got away. This fight is kind of, like, silly. In the sense that, like, crazy things can happen in this boss fight. Alright, hopefully we can pick him up. Ooh, get ooh, it. Ooh. But anyway. That's fine. He's one of the shorter bosses in the game. You can one-shot him. I was the first to invent the one shot on him, but it's it's different on every difficulty because you have to know which combo to do on what difficulty. So on Mania, you can do the right side combo and kill him. In other difficulties, you have to do a different combo that carries him across the screen. And to, the reason for that is like you have to get away from the signals. The signals will get in the way and interrupt the combo, throw you. They'll do whatever it takes to get you away from the boss, and it just it just makes for a bad time. There we go. Stage 11, the little elevator. You can't have a Streets of Rage without a little elevator, you know? No more elevators, that is. Uh, we got a White Tower. Uh, I forgot, park. White Tower has the elevator. Duh. <laughs> but yeah, but these girls here. Um... Go ahead, go, uh, actually, go ahead. They pretty much tend to kill themselves pretty easily, so. But this screen here introduces the Electric Bottle Girls and the Taser Cops. Now, this is another set of Baton Cops, but they have more HP. Uh, you kind of want to keep at least one of the uh, Bottle Girls alive because they actually help you, believe it or not. Yeah. Because they, help, uh, they actually help break the shields. Break shields and 
getting the little crowd control that you'll need for the bosses because they it's not it's like you when they throw the items it goes on everybody and not just ours you know not just the player itself so enemies will take that mm -hmm. okay almost there cool oh, we're gonna play it safe here we're gonna grab some health Erna Barney doesn't want to give out hugs. And he's here to give out tasers. Oh, social distancing push. Uh oh. You gotta be really careful here. Not trying to take a death. Alright, grab that. Cool, we're healthy again. It's funny because they just stay like beating each other. Oh, lingering hitboxes. That is something that is notorious in this game right now. Uh, the electric. Rings they actually have lingering hitboxes, as I call them, and it's not fun. Oh, definitely, especially for the electrocution. That's all it is. Like if it for flame as well. Flame could be a can be a thing. Could be uh, could be a little crazy thing, but more it's more towards the electric the electric side. So yeah, we're going to a plane now because uh, the main boss, one of the Y one of the Y twins got the plane so we're trying to catch him so that's where we're at here apparently all right grab some the grenade the whole point of using the grenade is to, is to break the uh the armor we want, we want to break the shield on these guys or at least one of them yeah because the other guy the... Just to chill. <laughs> mm -hmm. so you grab the taser and basically like you can you can break the shield a lot easier than having to like Use our normal attacks. Then we have new jump kick girls. They gain iframes on their recovery, which is super annoying. But that's the game. Can we get the can we get the boost? Can we get the boost? Ah, if you do it properly, you can actually dash and boost inside of the uh, this little cabin here. Actually helps you get into the room a lot quicker, which lets you fight these guys a little bit faster. Yeah, yes, yes, for sure. I know Blaze could do that, like, a little bit more easier than Adam, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> right? Uh, but that's what Blaze needs. <laughs> yeah, Blaze has the ability. So here we're going to burn all the stars. One. Two. I guess what? One more. Because we don't want to deal with them. Because they all have armor, and all their moves have armor. <laughs> yes. All right. And this is my favorite boss fight because on the side here there is no wall. The right side. That's what he's gonna do. And bye, Mr. Y. Nice knowing you. A A A A A A A A A Boot Loops. Part. Gotta have it for breakfast, you know. Goodbye. <laughs> so basically what ends up happening here, on the left side, there's actually a wall. But on the right side by the cockpit, there is no wall. So it makes it easier for you to go for infinite. So it's pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, for those who have infinites, that... For those that have it. That they have, yes. It's like, otherwise you could jab infinite. You could do you know, other stuff. But yeah, here you are, stage 12 definitely one of the longer stages of this game and this particular one you start with only 25 30 percent of yellow health and the rest is green because you're coming from a plane crash <sighs> because you know uh, in the cutscene that we skipped off he was just like jumping over and we just survived the fall see if i can aggro uh ah uh, the aggro it's fine miss the aggro it's fine so it does help if you get it. Uh, it just it'll trigger the, uh, the one of the other biker girls to come in, so you could just take care of her as soon as possible. I should also mention, even if an enemy is uh, dead, you will still heal off of them, even at their lowest HP. I forgot this OST is actually good. This stage, I like it. 
things like forth. But uh, yeah, we're gonna pick up health items. We're gonna pick up the star here. Uh, in arcade mode, uh, you get extra lives every thirty thousand points. Thirty thousand? Yeah, thirty thousand yeah. points. 30, I, have, I have to look at my notes again. <laughs> 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 but uh, thirty thousand points in arcade. Uh, this is what you need. You'll definitely be able to pick up money bags, briefcases, some money to give you increase the points, which is really which you're gonna need for the for mania, because in this game there's no one ups at all. In this one, we're gonna use the chandelier to fight for here. Does good amount of damage. Z being really great wide receivers using weapons. Throwing weapons at them is not the most ideal thing, obviously. Oh, no, no. You want to make sure you don't throw weapons at them. Because you are barking up a tree you don't want to be on. Yeah. Nice to see. It's good to see X in the background as the mosaic. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of uh, throwback things to the older Streets of Rage games. Okay, so here we're gonna use this on him. Into super. I should get rid of him. Then we have one Z left. And that's it. That room is clear. Now, the one thing about this game, at the very end, we carry the mace because the mace is the way to do big damage to the last boss. Uh, pretty much your, your DPS. Yeah, you'll definitely get to use that in the final boss. If you don't have a mace, don't uh, don't worry. You don't have to worry too too much about it. Uh, the back attacks for a lot of characters are actually really good. And they, they do, do uh, they do a good amount of damage. And uh, and it's actually quick. So it's probably if you have if, if you don't have the mace for any reason, great to uh, to fall on as a backup. So get here we're gonna introduce we're gonna get the kill up there. Uh, introducing the shadows they throw Two nines, ninja stars at you. They go fast, and so now you gotta do. You have here spike pendulum for these the big bends slash parts. You just see there the the fly around. Should we go? Up? That should be it. Grab the health. All right, looking good. Getting to prepare for the, uh, the Hi, final Mitzvah. boss, Mitzvah, the other half of the twin. Rapier Sword as her choice of weapons as opposed to Machine Gun from this room. Why? But obviously both of them are not safe from these boots. They're not safe from the boot, man! Yeah, rated E for everyone. Oh, well, everyone can get on it. <laughs> hey! Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Everyone can get in on it. It's cool. All right, then we gotta go back for the mace. Okay. All right, and we throw the mace across the screen because we're gonna be over on that side later on. And now you gotta fight the Y twins together. Yeah, fighting them both at the same time gets annoyance. But uh, but right, cool. obviously you want to do the most damage towards Y. Uh, yeah. The only reason why you want to do the most damage of Y is because he will summon the spider machine robot here. And you don't have to deal with them in this mode because he just shoots at you and it's pretty annoying trying to deal with the last boss too. Alright, so now the goal here is to try to hit Miss Y. Promise why. Yeah, and the he's doing it on that like the really far corner is because the robot can't reach him there for some reason. So this gives you like a little safe spot for you to be able to do the infinite on Y and then take care of the of the robot here. And then uh, this is where the mace comes in handy. If you don't have the mace, obviously you have the back attack to help you out.
So this is pretty much it. We just wait for the legs and then we just do our thing. Yeah, and the one thing to note that is the uh, the items used doesn't break on the on the robot machines because the robot legs is an actual item and not like a person. So you could just right. keep packing ten time. time. RTA of 5314. Not bad. Yeah, and that's actually what uh, this is what Streets of Rage 4 is all about. Especially with Adam, at least. <laughs> Every other character has their, have their own story to tell. Yeah, so basically, I did a lot of routing with this game early on. Uh, like I mentioned before, I did a, learned a lot of different combos and stuff like that to learn how to do the infinites on the bosses, knowing how to bounce them off of like the crates. For example, when you fight the divas, you know, there's two of them and there are crates that you can actually hit them on. Uh, you can convert off of those. It is tricky. It does take a little bit of effort and a lot of practice. Um, but there's other things like spawn manipulation, but that mostly comes into play in Mania, which is by far the hardest difficulty to speedrun, which is why I didn't go for that today. But uh, that aside, um, there are some other manips in the lower difficulties, but it's it's not as prevalent as Mania. Um, Adam is by far one of the most fun characters to play. Every character does offer something different for the player. I would definitely say the Streets of Rage 4 characters offer a lot more for the player for if you intend to speedrun this game. Uh, I will definitely tell you for sure it is a very fun game to speedrun. Whether you play Adam, you know, just don't play Axel. Axel's not good right now. <laughs> but there is there are certain things to him that is that are interesting, but Everyone else right now is really, really strong. So yeah, like play Floyd, like my yeah. character Floyd. <laughs> yeah, you can you can play Floyd. Um, Jerry, yeah. please, yeah. But uh, what's the good thing about this game is like uh, what a lot of people probably for doesn't know who doesn't play who only plays it like either once or twice is that this game does have play re replay value. Oh, you definitely. get to unlock you get to unlock retro characters if you haven't noticed already. You'll be able to unlock Street to Reach One characters of Axel. Blaze, Adam, even the old Adam, even Streets of Rage 2 characters and 3. So, for those who are like, man, where's, what happened to Skate? What happened to Max? Y'all, here's the retro version of this character. Yeah, the retro version. So, yeah, this is Streets of Rage 4. Um, it's a great game. Like I said, it's got a lot of fighting game content, uh, or rather, fighting game mechanics. So, if you're interested in a beat em up that's not just a, uh, a typical beat em up, this is the one for you. So, yeah. Uh, right now, speedrun.com does have the forums. Um, there are some things. There's also Streets of Rage 4 Discord, um, made by the developers themselves, I believe. And they talk a lot of tech there, but in between those two places, you definitely find some information for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Uh, I'm gonna, this, I'm gonna to try not to make this too long. So obviously I wanna say a big thanks to GDQ for allowing me to do this in the first place. Thank you so much. Uh, Street Trace 4 is a great game. Big ups to GuardCrushGames.emu and LizardCube for giving us this fantastic game. Big shout outs to Jordy, you know. Uh, with that being said, also thanks to David for doing commentary for me. He's my uh, co-op partner. Um, big ups to my boys in the Discord, Black Ace, uh, Silent, Secret, you know, um, who else is in there? Nick, Riddy, and all you guys. Thank you guys for supporting me and pushing me to continue playing the game. It really means a lot. And big ups to my Adam brother, the Mighty Bill. And with that being said, thanks everyone for watching. Oh, you oh. should go go to go to, to uh, the IGT oh, screen right already, IGT. because uh, the leader in the leaderboard uh, it goes the in the leaderboard it goes by IGT yeah, as opposed to it. RTA. Because in the this game is released on all different platforms, but they all have different loading time different load uh, loading times. load times. So it it came to us consistent where IGT is the uh, the way to go as of right now. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, fifty one, fifty four, not bad. I think that's close. That's close to my PB from last night. So hey, we'll take it. It's yeah, pretty good that's for, it. uh, for like a marathon run situation. I'm sorry. I said that's pretty good for a marathon run situation. Oh yeah, and we had no. That was deathless actually. That's really good. <laughs> I actually PB'd with a death yesterday. So. <laughs> Go figure. Mania, oof. Mania is the only difficult that's not marathon safe, in my opinion. Hardest is pretty decent for that. I've been working on Hardest a lot more. I actually have a record in Hardest as well. 
I'm number three right now in Mania. I haven't gone back to it yet because reasons. But yeah, pretty dang good. Pretty dang good. Yeah, and if you want to see more Streets of Rage 4, you should definitely check out Kenso on his channel. Plug, 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 plug. But, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks everybody it's... for tuning in, sir. What was that? I was say, yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. I was like, yeah, it's Shin Yeah. It's fine. It's on the screen. It's on it's the right screen. It's right there. We're good. <laughs> but, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. That's the last of our speedruns for today. Uh, make sure you tune in on Sunday. We're going to have a Xenoblade Chronicles show uh, celebrating a little bit of a delayed anniversary for that game. It was on Wednesday, I believe. Uh, we're going to have Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and uh, future connected runs for you all. It's going to be a bunch of fun. Of course, updated information on SGQ is on our website. But we're going to take a quick break. And then after that, we're going to raid someone. So stick around for a few minutes and we're going to send you off to someone else. Cheer them on in chat. Send them some fun energy. Otherwise, we will see you on Sunday.